Who's the to count again? Fuck yeah, let's do it. Alright, hello everybody, welcome to Encounter Roleplay, my name is Will, and today we are back with a new idea, a new show, or a little revision of an older show, if you've been around for, I don't know, maybe six months was the last time we did this, I, I, I ended up talking to Sly Flourish about this on his channel the other day, uh, and the document, in case you want to be reading this with me, is exclamation point chat plays, but you can see it on the screen right now, so... The idea is that you guys in chat are going to play Dungeons and Dragons, and I am going to Dungeon Master for you. Uh, and, as you can see here, we'll go to list overlay, uh, I've got a bunch of cool maps to show you guys uh, to play through. We've got a dwarf there. Um, but the question is, as we dive into this, exactly how we're going to do this. What's the best method for us to do this? Because in the past when I've done this, it got very, very chaotic. Uh, and that was partly because... You know, playing D and D with a lot of people can get very, very confusing. So I've got a couple of ideas. The first idea is how we did it before, which is the first method. Everyone plays their own character. Uh, you kind of role play in chat. Uh, the only problem with this one is it's difficult to use maps and tokens when there are 60 people playing, right? Um, it's almost impossible for me to be able to use these cool, sexy maps, uh, and I think that adds a, an extra kind of element to it for uh, for for those of you in chat. Let me do that. Um, method two, and I think this is the method that we're going to try today as a kind of tester, what's up my puppy, um, is uh, the second one, so character teams basically, so everyone picks a character by changing their chat colours, and these are a couple of ideas I had, we had an elf who would be uh, a green, a human fighter who would be red, a dwarf would be blue, and a wizard who would be yellow, so you'd play that character and talk in that character's voice, by changing your chat color, uh, similar how we did that uh, a couple of months ago on uh, a couple of uh, those. Drew multiple choice question actions. I like that idea as well. Another idea I had was like a voting system on decisions that you guys make. Uh, so do we go down the left hand tunnel? Do we go down the right hand tunnel? And then we could have a, maybe a straw poll for something like that into which tunnel we go down. Um, but I think this method is the one that we uh, will end up going with. Uh, and so you guys as teams will make decisions for the different characters, which will make it much easier for us to manage. And then we can use maps and tokens. Uh, and that will be useful, I think, because then we can have these sweet sexy maps, we can have a dwarf, we can have a wizard, we can have an elf, we can have a fighter, and then I can move these tokens around easily for you guys and show you guys the map. So, uh, what do you guys think? Is that a good idea? Would you rather go with the more kind of, I don't know, fear to the mind, everyone plays their own character? Um, give me some, give me some feedback, let me know what you guys think. Uh, I like the idea of, uh, voting on group-based decisions. And I think there's a way we can do that through Moldark as well. Uh, let me see, there might be a little poll, yes, there is a poll thing. Huh, that's cool. Okay, yeah, I like this. Um, so that's, that's the plan. Um, what is it, usually watching Incredibly Sexy English from by now? <laughs> I'm a team elf person, teams for sure. Okay, we'll go with teams for today. So. Let's get some colors first of all, and we're gonna we're gonna do some character generation for these guys as well. I think we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about who they are, uh, what their names are, and stuff like that, so we can get a bit more detail on them. So we've got the dwarf as a blue, the wizard as a yellow, yellow, kind of orangey, I guess. Yellow it is. I'll be the creepy uncle that just stops and occasionally see what's up whilst I'm working. All right, <laughs> I dig it. Um. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so let's talk about who the characters are, first of all. So, we've got an elf. And I was fig figuring we could just pick some pretty generic roles, like an elf ranger, who I was thinking. We need, a, we need an elf ranger name for our character generation. Um, so, elf ranger, we'll do this in our green to kick things off here. So, um, there we go. Am I the correct green yet? That seems like a good green. That seems like a good green. Yeah. You can't change your chat color on mobile? Uh, I don't know. Can you? Can you not? Maybe you can't. I'll click that there. Um, Legolas. Yeah, yes, we'll call it Legolas. My favorite, my favorite type. The elf ranger. Uh, so, uh, ranged expert. I don't know. Um, makes... Logical decisions. Uh, 
That's pretty all we need for it, really. We've got a human fighter as well, who we're doing red. Uh, close combat. Dupalas. Kelf. What's his lineman? Fuck me. Close combat specialist. Wields a great axe. Yeah, uh, ranged expert. Wields a longbow. Ha 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 hee, this music is very intense. Too pious, likes to whittle. Arrested once for fighting in <laughs> children underground pits. I like Kelf. Kelf is a good name. I think a name color based of rank from Twitch like Discord? What's that? What do you mean by that? Kelf. We'll call this guy Kelf. A human fighter, will a great axe, and uh, I don't know, uh, lusts, not custs, lusts for adventure. That could be our fighter in red. There we go. Uh, we'll have our dwarf. Oh, we also need a human fighter name. We need a human fighter name. What's a good name for a for a human? I could bring up my name generator here. For humans, I use Westeros name generator. Ah. Uh, Aaron, Grimm, Manrel, Furnar, Sulvan, Tyral, Mike, Mike is on the list, Tiran, Tiran, okay, Tiran, Donny, Donny Darko, Jeff, <laughs> we'll call him Jeff, you can change your colour and settings, okay, even on mobile, okay, that's good news, go to gear, edit appearance, set your name to colour, there you go, fantastic, uh, so, Dwarf, um, okay, Got, got to have a good dwarf name as well. Uh, also a close combat specialist. I'm thinking uh, wields a you know sword and board, a sword and shield. Loves loves beer, <laughs> ale I guess. Uh, <laughs> that can be his free. <laughs> Our dwarf. There we go. Well, let's do all of this in blue. There we go. Wilbur's a good dwarf name. What's up, Judy? We're making some characters right now for our chat plays game. Stink the dwarf. Wilbur the dwarf. Wilbur. Okay, we'll go. Wilbur! Wilbur. Alright, cool. Now we'll have our uh, Wilbur Oregon. Wilbur Oregon! What about Oregon like that? Okay. Uh, and then we have our wizard. Uh, I don't know. I guess our human barbarian might be closer. And then we could have our dwarf fighter. And then we could have our, I don't know, half elf wizard. Just to, just to mix it up. Half F wizard. <laughs> and this guy is going to be in a yellowy orange. It's kind of hard to see, isn't it? That'll do. Bethana. Zephyros. Zephyros from Storm King's Thunder. Lillian. Yeah, they should have a we should have a we should have a girl in here. We need some some representation. We've all gone we've gone for just blokes so far. Let's have Lillian. Alright, cool. Like so, Lillian, a sun elf. Plus two int. Can we name him F the Wizard? <laughs> So, uh, uh, so, uh, charismatic, the face of the party, I guess. Uh, spellcasting experts. Scared of Mephib one, he actually need that. Okay, charismatic, the face of the party. Uh, wields, I don't know, a staff. Staff of magic! <laughs> Wizard name Azalea. Lillian Azalea. Uh, Ar Arzel. Yeah, I did it. I nailed it. Hates tea. <laughs> Fumbles the wizard. <laughs> I like, uh,. Imaya, so Elf Ranger, Kelf Imaya. Now Kelf could be a female name as well, right? Kelf sounds like it could be feminine. Okay. 
got a female, it's got this male. Ha! Female. Dwarf is, I don't know. Wilbur's a pretty male name, right? Alright. So when people join in, they know what gender the characters that they're playing are. Who wants to touch Wilbur's Oregon? <laughs> Oregon Trail. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, cool. We've got our characters. We've got our characters. Now we need. We're gonna jump over here. Now we need to create tokens for them. So. Uh, let me show you guys my. I've got a GM's one as well. Uh, I'm about to show you guys the tokens I'm making here. So we need to find an elf. Female elf ranger. This should do for Kelf. We can bring her in there. There we go. This will be a uh, Kelf. This control by all players. We'll put lighting on it as well. We've got dynamic lighting turned on for Kelf. She's got sight like so. Uh, we need a wizard as well. Oregon Trail from his land. <laughs> Let's find a wizard. Merchant female wizard. I actually want a guy wizard. Uh, let's see if this one works. There we go. This can be our wizzy. Uh, what do we call our wizard? We called here... Oh, her! We did want a female wizard. I'm a dummy. I'm a dummer. Lillian. Lillian. Lillian of the... I don't know. The Silver Glades. That could be a little Yan. Dwarf is Wilbur. Wilbur, Oregon. He's also got Psy, and then we just need our human fighter, right? Uh, this is a module. Uh, Forge of Fury is a module. I'll do like a proper introduction here in a minute. I just wanted to do a little bit of backstory stuff with you guys. Uh, fighter is what we need. I need a human. Human, human guy, please. Why can't I find a, a human man? Human guard, that'll do. And we said great axe, right? I think if we search guard, we can find a great axe guy pretty easily. If I remember correctly, yeah, we got a ton of them here. Uh, great axe, there we go. Found him. Ha ha. And this guy was called Tyran. Tyran. All right, and then let's give him some. A light. Illumination. There we go. Now we have our merry band of adventurers. Let's go back to our player's perspective. There we go. Is it green enough for Keith? <laughs> Keith. Oh, it's Kelf. Oh, it's Kelf. Damn it. <laughs> uh, tabletop simulator for an actual game D&D. Oh, yeah. I'm sure plenty of folks here have played uh, that. I, I, I played it once before. Um, got a sub to get to Discord here? No, 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 Discord is free for everyone. You can, you can find it here, mate. Um, okay, so let's quickly go back to our rules uh, for the game. So, the game is about to begin. Um, <laughs> you should name that Keith. Um, game's about to begin. We're going to be playing Forge of Fury. Forge of Fury is uh, from Tales from the Yawning Portal, and uh, it was first published in the year 2000 for D&D &D, uh, 4th edition. I believe. Might be in third, actually. Um, either way, it's been updated to fifth. And uh, you guys in chat are going to be picking teams. Uh, and each team represents one of the characters that's going to be in the game. Elf, human fighter, dwarf, uh, in fact, human barbarian. Let me change this because we edited some of these a bit. Ooh, caps. Uh, dwarf wizard. <laughs> Wild magic search for Wilbur. I love it. <laughs> dwarf fighter. Uh, half elf wizard and our elf ranger. So those are our players. I'll roll a d10k here for uh, for Wilbur in a second. So all you have to do is change your color in chat. The way you do that is you go to your gear, you go edit appearance, and then you change it to one of these. Um, I should on here. I'll edit the token color. So Kelf is green, right? Yeah, Kelf is green. Wobble Dwarf is blue, like so. Lillian, the wizard, is kind of orangey yellow, and Tyran is red. So these are the different teams that you have to pick from. So you can pick 
a racing class like so. And uh, that'll be the character that you guys can uh, be playing. Uh, when it comes to group decisions, uh, you guys uh, will have uh, a vote when a team needs to make a decision or the whole group have to make a decision We'll have a vote. I believe I can poll in uh, Moldark or we can do straw polls as well. Nice and easy like that um, When you want to um, Roleplay say something in character the way to do that is forward slash me So when I do forward slash me like so in space uh, I'll show you guys there in chat I'm talking in character, like so. Um, you can have uh, speech marks as well, uh, if you'd like to. Um, so that's the easiest way for me to tell. When rolls are required, uh, either I can make a roll, or there is also uh, exclamation point roll, uh, like so, in chat. Thanks for following, Vascal. Uh, yeah, I think we'll, we'll kind of do this as we go and, and figure out rules. Uh, obviously, um, when it comes to this, uh, if you, you can't do anything in the game, right? So you can't just take control of the character of the whole team. Some things have to be group decisions, so make sure that uh, you're not just kind of going off on a wild one uh, when other people are also trying to have fun as well. So bear in mind there are other players at the game. Uh, there are currently about 50 or 60 of you guys, so uh, <laughs> it might get a little bit crazy. Uh, of course, if you are enjoying the show, then hit that follow button and join us. Uh, we might do this every week if this uh, kicks off well. And I think what I might also do is just put a little bit of text on the screen for you guys as well, just to show each character. So Kelf. Uh, Elf Ranger Green. So we'll just have these different ones up here on the screen for you guys to uh, to see a little easier in case people come in. And also, it's exclamation point chat plays to begin the game as well. You go to your gear, uh, and I'd appreciate it throughout this as well if uh, folks can help people who need uh, 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 touch up on the rules or um, Haman, Haman Barbarian. Uh, and what not. So let's get that there, and then I will begin to read out the uh, the intro text for your uh, adventure today for the Forge of Fury. It's a good one. It's a good one. Uh, we got Tiran. We need Lillian, the wizard. Lillian. Oh, I need to put red in brackets for that as well. Lillian, half elf wizard. And she is Team Yellow. So, uh, pick your teams, guys. Tell me who you're going to be playing today. Let me know who you've picked and why as well. Let's see. Something about what... Uh, can this be played while lurking? Yeah, sure. Yeah. You, yeah, you, you shouldn't need to, uh, to know too much about what's going on. I'm a 12-foot tall harpy. Is that so? <laughs> Lillian. And then finally, if I remember the character, Wilbur! Who could forget Wilbur? Who am I? Who even am I? Wilbur. Good old... Good old Wilbur! Probably talks about like this and he's... He's Billy Connolly and he's drunk most of the time. <laughs> Dwarf fighter and he'll be in blue. Dabba dee dabba da. Like so. And we'll just move these over to our actual battle map screen. Let's see what we got. I'm on Team Mike. <laughs> it's the only blue I can get. Oh, really? That's weird. This looks, like, looks kind of greeny blue from here. Uh, exclamation point chat plays rice ball. I'll put the uh, characters back up as well. Lillian. We'll put them here, shall we? That'll work. Let's add in Wilbur. <laughs> He's right next to my name on it, so we go. Wilbur. We need Tyran, and then we can begin. So for all the setup, guys, I know that uh, you guys are eager to get ready and rocking and rolling here. Tyran, and then we'll finally add in Kelf. I do keep saying Keith. <laughs> J. Kelf. There we go. Chat plays Wilbur. <laughs> there we go, and I'll make a little text box in the background. 
for our good friends here so you guys can see it a little bit better. There we go. Like so. Easier to see now. Hey Jen, what's up? How do you play? How do 50 people play four characters? Let's find out, shall we, Nani? I'm excited. Alright, so let's get our intro music off and let's read out some of our intro text here about the adventure. Two centuries ago, the great dwarf smith Durgid in the Black and his clan were driven from their home by a horde of fierce orcs and trolls. They plundered the dwarves' ancestral halls and slew all they could catch. Fleeing his enemies, Durgedin led the destitute remnants of his clan in search of a new home. After years of wandering, the dwarves discovered a great cavern system beneath the stone tooth, a rugged, forested hill crowned by a bare, rocky crag. There, Durgedin and his followers founded the stronghold of Kundrakar. About a century ago, a member of Durgedin's clan was captured by a powerful orc tribe during a raid, and the orcs learned of the enemy's hidden stronghold. The orc chieftains raised a great army and marched on Kundrakar. In a hard-fought siege lasting months, the orcs tunneled around the dwarven defenses. When they finally stormed the place, they put all within to the sword, then carried off wagon loads of booty. In the years since the great battle, various creatures have occupied the stronghold and used the place as a base for their raids. At other times, the caverns have lain empty, except for the mindless and bloodthirsty monsters that haunt such places. Today, legends of Durgedon's vengeance, or the Smith's War as it became known, and the extraordinary blades the dwarves forged in anger still surface from time to time in the lands near the Storm Tooth. Alright, so... That is our little bit of intro text for Forge of Fury. And uh, the, you guys are, of course, the fantastic adventurers who are going to be exploring the dark realms of Kundrakar. Now, we have... Uh, we've got our, our heads up. We've got uh, front of the party, Wilbur and Tiran. Now, Wilbur is a, uh, a dwarf fighter. He's the guy with a sword and shield. And so when you are going into battles and combats, you got to be thinking exactly, uh, Wilbur's probably going to be the guy on the front line. Uh, we've got Tiran as well, who is a barbarian. He's also going to be frontlining most likely. Uh, him and Wilbur are good friends. Uh, they have a healthy competition between the two, similar to uh, Legolas and Gimli. Uh, and in our back row, we have Lillian, who is Team Yellow, the uh, mage of the party, the half-elf wizard. Uh, good at spell casting and um, <laughs> team keep, uh, and uh, and destroying enemies from uh, on far. And then we have Kelf or Keith, as she is also known apparently, uh, who is the Elven Ranger of the party, uh, who'll be picking off enemies from afar with her keen eye. Uh, so we've got the lads up front, the ladies up back, bringing the support, and um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. So you guys. Uh, find yourselves at the mountain door. Now, this area of Kundrakar is a natural cavern that was expanded and improved upon by Durgedin's folk back in the day, who created a series of halls and guard chambers that protect the entrance to the realm. The place is still well fortified, even to this day. And you guys, as a band of adventurers, keen on finding the secrets to Durgedin's hold and the treasures that are promised within, have come to the mountain door. You've heard that this former dwarven stronghold is now occupied by a band of orc raiders, led by a fierce ogre who calls himself Great Ulf. These raiders have emerged from the mountain door to hunt and pillage in the surrounding area, and uh, they've blocked off lower access to Kundrakar for safety. So the only way in is through the top mountain door where you guys have found yourselves today. So, as uh, as we enter into today's adventure, let me describe to you what you guys can see. You are in a circular chamber, uh, and the path leads onwards into darkness. Now, uh, for those of you who have dark vision, that's everyone except from Tiran, actually, uh, I believe. Um, 
you guys can see uh, about 30 to 60 feet ahead of you. Uh, and currently, this is where the path winds. You hear... If I get to my sound pad. Uh, you hear the sound of a wet dripping coming from the chamber beyond. And you sense that there might be a larger room uh, down the end of this tunnel. So... What are we going to, uh, what are we going to do here? You guys are in darkness. Let's read what you guys say. A good drow. Poor Tyran can't see, that's true. So, um, Kelsha gave us, uh, infrared vision. Well, I'll tell you what, Kelf team, you guys do have the cantrip, uh, light, so you could all also, uh, always... Um, do that. Um, yeah, if you guys want to roll for perception, I'll ask you guys when to roll. Uh, so, i tell you what, perception check. Let us have the elf ranger, so those in team Kelf, to roll me perception checks, please. And you can do that with an exclamation point roll, like so, in chat. But make sure that you guys, as a rule, because when I did this in the past, we got loads of rolls spammed. Please only roll if you are rolling for the character and when I ask you to. Alright, so, Team Keith, let's go. So, a separate team chat we can discuss this, what to do. Uh, that might be something that we look upon expanding in the future, maybe doing that via Discord. Uh, this is kind of a test, I guess. So, currently, currently we're just rolling with it. Alright, a little bit loud there. Let's see. So, so Team Keith. I got a 10. Would one of you little ladies help us out in the dark in here, says Tyrion. I can read this out in character. Would one of you little ladies help us out in the dark in here? So, uh, then we see that Lillian lights Wilbur's shield. Uh, Thank you, lady! <laughs> and let's see. So, we got a, a natural uh, 17 from uh, from Pike. A uh, nat 1 from Mike there. <laughs> so, um, you guys can see up ahead. Um, I wonder, in fact... So... So is it better for you guys to all roll in roll 20? Uh, sorry, in, sorry, in, uh, not that, in Twitch chat. Or is it easier for me to roll for the characters uh, and just roll perception checks in here? Because that might be the way that we could do that without getting too spammed by rolls. And <laughs> glares at the dwarf. <laughs> Let me put that back there a little bit. There we go. I think that might be an easier way to do it. Um, yeah, so we'll have, uh, we'll have Kelf roll a perception check here. Uh, she rolled a seven. Uh, so, uh, Kelf, can't really see too much ahead. You, uh, you think that you might hear some voices coming from, um, all right, cool, roll 20 it is. Uh, you think that you can hear some, uh, Voices uh, coming from beyond, but you can't see too much further. Uh, with Wilbur's shield, what I'll do, seeing as he's got light on it, I will add an extra radius to Wilbur's shield. So it's now emitting a 60 foot by 60 foot light, uh, like so. Uh, so as the light goes up, you can see a little bit further ahead in the tunnel. Squids up ahead and mumbles, hmm, advanced darkness, this feels like someone else's problem. <laughs> She's stoned, you think? Yeah. So we're gonna uh, start moving Wilbur forwards here, like so. Uh, yeah, we're not using chat rolls, Yami. We're gonna use roll twenty rolls. Seems much easier, like so. So we're gonna move the group ahead a little bit. Let me know if anyone's like jumping ahead or so. <laughs> She's really high. <laughs> she has multiple personalities. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. I like it. I like it. So. Hmm. Would you like to take your... Would you like to take your shiny ahead, little boar? She's totally squinting in the wrong direction. Yeah, she's like, hmm. I can't see much ahead of... Ahead of us, dwarf. Best you press ahead. Team Lillian. Well, Lillian is, uh... Yellow. Can Telf do a stealth check and look ahead? Yeah, absolutely, Leafjack. Uh, so... Uh, Kelf. I can't see too much. I'll try and sneak ahead, I guess. So, an eight. Still, dot, dot, dot. Don't be salty with me, Ayami. 
There we go. We've got an eight there. Uh, so she's going to creep ahead a little bit. Um, and uh, and see what she can find up ahead in this tunnel. Wilbur is carefully and in defensive position, okay? So Wilbur is kind of back here. Yeah, so make sure you change your chat colors. Uh, otherwise, I don't know who you guys are playing as. And uh, so if you're not green and you can't roll for Kelf, etc. Um, so, as you step into this chamber here, can I lift her over Wilbur? Are you sure you can, like, yeah, like the Tyrion the just grabs Kelf. Ah, oh, there you go. Froze her over Wilbur. Wilbur's like, ah, oh, bloody elf. Is Wilbur go just going to blind other characters? Hopefully not. All right. So Kelf is here. How... <laughs> she creeps into this cavern here, and you can see around her, and... As she steps into the cavern, she can see that there is something out there in the darkness. Tyrion would like to move next to Wilbur. Okay, there we go. So you guys are now standing next to each other. Group ever, I bet, yeah. Alright, so Kelf, you can spot that there is a, a creature here. Uh, now, uh, you can't see it too well. It appears to be humanoid. Uh, and the dripping is definitely coming from this chamber here. There's actually some uh, water, maybe a natural stream, which is coming through a top of the cavern uh, and pulling around here. You do hear a couple of <laughs> grunts from uh, this area here, uh, where that creature is standing. So you have a you have a choice. Uh, you could obviously attack straight away, or uh, you could try and sneak back to the group. Um, who are waiting patiently to hear what uh, what Kelf has found up there. He does not appreciate being lifted by an elf. I'd imagine so. <laughs> Toss him! <laughs> Toss him! What's up, Benny Dell? Exclamation point chat, please. I'd like to be ready to dash if she needs help. Okay, so Tyrion... Tyrion is probably, like, uh, chafing at the bit a little bit. And, uh, and just, uh, if that elf needs help, I'm gonna run straight in there. Probably, probably doesn't trust Kelf too much. Okay, we should head back and let the others know what we saw. Alright. So, Kelf. Wilbur's growing impatient, I imagine so. So, Kelf is going to sneak back here uh, and, uh, and rejoin the party. Okay. You know what would be awesome in this game that I've just realized? It would actually be awesome if you guys could control the actions of other players. So if I had, like, someone here who was just, like, voicing Kelf, and someone who was voicing Wilbur and Tira and Lillian, that could be really cool, actually. Dwarf tossing. Should we ask about what's up there in the front? Yeah, so, uh, so Tira can ask, what's up there in the front? What, what did you see there, Kelf? And, uh, Kelf relays back the information. Uh, there's a creature there in the darkness. I couldn't see what it is. The dripping noise seems to be coming from that cavern, too. And, uh... Well, I, I couldn't see what it is, but it, I think there might be more of them. I want a voice, Lil. Okay, cool. Humanoid, moving around. Yes, sir. And, uh, make a team leader. That could be, that could be cool. That'd be cool. Oh, the voice on? Okay, cool. So, um, so the group of you are standing here in this cavern. You've, uh, relayed that information. Um, I nominate Mike for us. Okay. Um... I'd love to voice Keith. I'm sure you would. I'm sure you would. Uh, and you know that there is something out there. Now, what's the what's the plan of attack? Um, now, this could be one of our poles here. So, um, so we could have the plan to sneak in uh, or frontal assault. Um, this this pole it or uh, assault. Okay, so option one is sneak in. Uh, it doesn't cost anything to vote. Okay, I don't know how you do this. <laughs> okay, so option one is sneak. Option two is attack. Okay, so the way that you do this is I start a poll here. So you do exclamation point vote. Uh, and you do zero to vote sneak, 
and you go vote uh, one for. There we go. Time reigning one minute. Uh, it's, uh, vote one for attacking, and that should be how we vote. Uh, Nanu, exclamation point, chat plays. That should work. This is the first time I've trolled this, tried this polling system. It definitely looks like it's working. Um, so, that's a group debate. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Wilbur is. Uh, Why don't we just go attack him? Come on, we can take him. We can take him. It's probably just a, just a halfling or something in the air. Uh, and I'm sure Kelf returns. We know that there are orcs in here, Wilbur. You might not be the stealthiest of creatures, but, well, I am. And, uh, ooh, currently we're looking quite tied on these, uh, on these votes here. Um, and, uh, Lillian can weigh in. She'll say, uh, I definitely think we should sneak in too, uh, attacking straight up, uh, well, that doesn't seem like the best idea. So, uh, yes, let's see what our vote is. Uh, so the poll is closed, and attack won with nine votes. So, you do forward slash me, like so. She's more hippie like that, do you think? Yeah, I agree. Um, so, uh, our poll has won. Um, and so, Halfling, taffling, halfling, tiefling, I like it. Um, so, Wilbur convinces the group. Um, so this is the equivalent of, you know, wanting to roll a, uh, like, a, rolling a persuasion. Like, Come on, we can take them! We can take them! And Tyrion's like, all right, dwarf, I, I think we can take them. If we really have to, let's go in. And so, uh, Keith and Lillian roll their eyes, and like, fine, fine, we'll go in, we'll, we'll go in. Uh, I, I hate those bloody orcs! So, uh, Wilbur's gonna charge right in by the looks of things. Fantastic. So, um, Wilbur is gonna come in here, uh, and Tyrion's gonna come behind him as well, followed by Kelf, and then followed by Lillian, like so. And what we can do for this as well, when we start to, um, develop more and more of the game, is that I can actually write up character sheets and I can have you guys have access to those character sheets, so you know exactly what spells that they have and abilities and stuff like that. Um, so you guys are just going to charge into the room here. Let me bring you up here, uh, and Kelf's going to follow. Oops, there we go. Tier like so, and Lillian in the behind, uh, and you guys enter into this chamber here, and um, you see that there are these two rough-looking uh, orc figures who are wearing uh, dusty-looking uh, mail um, and uh, would appear to be talking to one another in, um, in a language that will say Lillian understands. She's a wizard. She'll, she'll have an extra language or two. Uh, yeah, we should name the party. We should name the party. I agree. Um, the uh, level of the group is uh, free. Everyone is at level free currently. Uh, and Lillian... Um, God, Jairus. Uh, Lillian uh, understands that the orcs are saying, uh, uh, I can't believe that Chief Wolf's making his way here on watch. I can't believe it. Uh, and Wilbur's like, Charge! Uh, the orcs turn round, like, drawing their weapons and uh, ready for combat. So we are going to roll some initiative as we... Uh, begin this adventure here, and I'll have a turn order on the screen for you guys as well. That's a dice roller, not the turn order. How do I turn on the dice? Not the dice, the uh, initiative tracker. Oh, that's because I'm a player in this one. Here we go. Initiative tracker. Like so. So, I shall have this rolled for our Wilbur here. Uh, let's add him... How do we add him to the turn order? Add turn, let's give Tyrion a turn. Let's give Kilf a turn, Lil Yell a turn, and the Orcs as well. If it'll let me. Let me bring him down here so I can do that. There we go. Easy peasy. So, um, we're going to roll some initiative for these guys. Keith needs some dragon scales, you think? What kind of level 3 dwarf fight I do? I don't play D&D. &D. Uh, okay, so we'll talk about that as we dive into our first combat here. 
The Shining Shield might be blinding, especially in the dark. You could definitely... Tr yeah, that's a good, interesting idea. So, Wilbur's going to roll his initiative. Uh, we're just going to give him a plus one, seeing as he's a dwarf fighter. Uh, and he rolled an 18. All right. Tyrion is... Uh, oh, yeah, plus two to initiative. We'll do this very basically. He also rolled an 18, but it's actually higher than uh, Wilbur's 18 there. Uh, we're going to have uh, Kelf roll. She'll have a plus three to her decks. How am I only rolling 18s? <laughs> Kelf rolled an 18, but she is a plus three, so that's even more of a success. Uh, and Lillian will just give her a plus two to her initiative as well, and she rolled an eight. Okay, and let me roll for our orcs here. If I can find them. There we go. I right. orc has an initiative bonus of plus one. All right. So he's going to roll for the team, and they rolled five. So there we go, five. So Lillian's going first. Tyrion, Wilbur, Kelf, and the orcs. Um, I'll let you handle uh, Wilbur's awesome skills. Sure. You need to roll more seventeens. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Okay, so for the oh, I don't want that blank. for the purposes of this, uh, describing spells will work uh, best for our characters. Um, so we'll have a couple of cantrips, a couple of spells, and like level threes don't have any like fireballs. Chain lightning's level three spell, so basically level one spells and cantrips, that kind of thing. Um, as <laughs> Lillian's getting a pseudo dragon pseudo layer, so Lillian uh, is not going first. Lillian is going there. Uh, Kelf is going first. There we go. So Kelf uh, is first on the initiative tracker. So Kelf players, Team Yellow. Yeah, Magic Missile is reasonable as well. Uh, if you give me a spell which sounds reasonable, she can have it for now. We'll draw a proper character sheets for next week. Uh, so Kelf players, uh, Team Green, in fact, not Team Yellow. Uh, team Green, you see two walks. You are well within range, you have a long bow which has a range of 120 feet. So you can easily shoot these guys, you have line of sight to both of them. And you decided to charge in, they are not surprised so you don't get a surprise round. Um, so, uh, you guys tell me what you guys want to do and I will, uh, I will roll it for you. I'm guessing there's going to be an arrow, but uh, which target shall we shoot at? Shall we shoot at orc number one? Orc number two? Yeah, we can hunter's mark, okay good idea. All right, so we can uh, we can do have Kelf's uh, one snipe lefty. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do we decide? You just talk, talk about it, man. You guys will uh, all chat, and uh, we don't need to poll for everything. So I'll just take some decisions that I see here that seem to make sense. Nice. All right, so we got a hunter's mark on. Let's just hold your action and roll a joy. <laughs> so uh, let's move find my combat audio as well. Last arm here. There we go. So we're going to uh, Hunter's Mark on the Orc on the left. So she kind of points out a finger, uh, draws back a bow, and shoots at Orc number one. Uh, we'll actually name, we'll actually color them. So this guy can be red, and this guy can be green. Sorry, blue. <laughs> I know what colors are, guys. Um, so yeah, make sure you guys wait for your turns. So Team Green, she's going to shoot. She'll have a plus five to shooting at orc number red. Uh, 17 is a hit against his armor class. Uh, you guys are going to roll a d8 plus three uh, for damage, which is 10. And then Hunter's Mark is a 1d6 extra damage. So 13 damage. Let's see how well that does. That is pretty damn good. Let's see. All right. So let me edit that. Minus 13. So an arrow flies out into the darkness, and you hear a grunt of, uh, uh, as uh, the orc takes the arrow into his side with Wilbur's shield illuminating the darkness. Uh, Kelf, that is your guys' turn. Team Red, it is Tyrion's turn. Uh, Tyrion and co, as we begin this combat, you guys are 40 to 35 feet away. From these guys, so a normal move action isn't going to get you there in uh, in time. Um, so yeah, good good question, guys. When you're uh, good point, actually, when you're it's not your turn, it's a good time to discuss your decisions together. 
Um, and like we mentioned in the future, uh, it might be a good idea for us to have our Discord uh, open for different teams. That might be something I can go and do now. Um, so you've got 30 feet of movement, and you're 40 to 35 feet away. So 40 feet away from uh, red, and you're 35 feet away from blue. So anyone in red is on uh, team team Tyran. So you can move here, anywhere about here, uh, with one move, or you can uh, foot your feet up and hold action to attack. That could definitely work. You get a feeling that they might uh, charge at you, uh, or you could double move to be in base contact with the orc. Um, so those are the decisions. Uh, either way, I'm going to start moving. Tyrion up to about here because we know that he's definitely moving and you guys can see uh, Okay, so you're gonna hold all right, so Tyrion's gonna go here and hold action uh, Looking behind you as you enter into this chamber you see there's a passageway leading downwards in a staircase uh, rough hewn stone All right, so um, Look out there other orcs around it. good point Okay, so Tyrion is holding his action and the hold action will trigger when an orc steps within five feet of Tyrion. So anywhere around this area, uh, and Tyrion will uh, attack. We can bonus action rage. Yeah, that's a good point. You guys can bonus action rage. All right, fantastic. So that is Tyrion's turn. Well, I'm in two roll 20s. This is fun. Wilbur, it is your turn. Now, for those in Wilbur's team, and that is Team Blue, make sure if you are... Uh, deciding what uh, actions uh, Wilbur is taking that you have your chat color to blue so I know who to uh, look at in the chat. Behind me, shine the light, little boar! Um, so Wilbur is similarly in a bit of a tough position. He's 35 feet away. Oh, in fact, Wilbur's closer up. Wilbur could reach Blue Orc if you wanted to and be within 30 feet and attack. Can step size here and ready our attack. That's true. Um, Hold action, lose bonus action. Oh, do you? Okay. I'll let you guys rage. You can rage before. Um, Wilbur is going to rush, bumping the orcs with a shield to trip them. Okay. Uh, if you're in team red, Rakan, make sure let you change your uh, colors. Uh, so I know who you're playing. So there's chat plays, find the rules and how to do that there. Uh, so Wilbur's going to be here. So Wilbur's going to rush up. Sounds like he wants to, you guys want him to uh, have a smashy, uh, and he can see further down this staircase as well. Uh, you don't hear the sounds of any other orcs too nearby, so uh, so you feel safe. Uh, so Wilbur is going to attack. He's got his uh, longsword and his shield, so he will give it a thrust towards Blue Orc, who's already injured on a twelve versus its armor class. Now a twelve, unfortunately for you guys, with uh, Team Wilbur, blue team, are not alive, uh, not alive, uh, is not a hit, it just misses the orc, and you hear the sound of blade and bla on blade as the uh, orc grunts and, uh, and shoves you off. So, that is Wilbur's turn. It is Lillian's turn. So Lillian, you guys are spellcasters, uh, so as I mentioned before, if there's a spell which needs to make sense, then feel free to do that. Uh, uh, click the gear. And edit appearance. I can add that into my document. Change your color. Gear cog on Twitch and edit appearance. There we go. Should help folks. There you go. Um, Damn your stench pricks! My battle concentration! So you want to do an acid splash. That's right. Great job you guys in Lillian's team. Uh, making sure that you had your turn ready. That's super helpful. So we're going to look at our SRD here. What acid splash does. You hurl a bubble of acid. Choose one creature within range, which is 60 feet. You guys are definitely in range. Or choose two creatures within range that are within 5 feet of each other. In this case, you've got two orcs that are within 5 feet of each other. Uh, target must see the dexterity saving throw or take 1d6 acid damage. Alright, good job guys. So, the splatter of acid is going to resonate across the chamber and they're both going to make dexterity saving throws. they got a plus one to their dexterity. So, the orc uh, red rolls a 16, which is a save. And the blue orc rolls an 18, which is also a save. Um, and unfortunately for you guys, seeing as it's a cantrip, 
uh, you don't do damage on a miss. So, um, so you hurl this bubble of acid, we'll say Lillian can move up a little bit, hurl a bubble of acid towards the two, but it just managed to uh, kind of hold up uh, their shields and uh, it just disintegrates against their armor. Okay, so, um, so there you go. Uh, worth a try though, good job. Uh, now it is the orc's turn to go. So, orc number, sorry not number, uh, the blue orc is going to attack Wilbur. In fact, we might have... No, we don't. Uh, Going to attack Wilbur. With his Great Axe. For a 9 versus Wilbur's armor class. We're actually going to stat these now. So Wilbur will have a 16 AC. Uh, in fact, we'll put AC here. Uh, like so. So 16 AC. And seeing as he's level 3, we'll give him 25 hit points. We're making these up, by the way. Uh, Tiran, who have a lower AC, 14, and his HP can be 20. Lillian will have a lower AC, 13, seeing as she's a whizzy. And she'll have 17 hit points. And Kelf, uh, she'll have a higher AC. We'll give her 16, because her dex is super high. And her hit points can be 19. There we go. So I'm making that up. Uh, so a 9 is not a hit against Wilbur, so the Orc bellows in fury. And, uh, 25 is pretty low for level 3. Uh, depends if you roll, I guess. We'll give him higher. We'll give him, like, 30. We'll give him 30. And we'll give Tyrion 25. Otherwise, I'll kill you guys real quick. We'll give Lillian... Oh, that's, uh, HP. Uh, 23. For some reason in my mind, I was making them level 1 characters. And we'll give her 24. That'll do. Um, so... So stairs down. Should we go wolf tone for the bite? That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, okay, so that is his turn. Orc number red. Orc number red. Is going to step in and try and fight Tiran. Uh, he's already been shot, this guy. Uh, and he's going to roll his attack roll against Tiran. Which is a natural 20, I'm afraid. And... Um, yeah, uh, luckily for Tiran, he gets to use his uh, reaction with his hold action here to attack uh, as the orc steps into the space. So before he does that, in case you kill the orc, because it is possible, now that I think about it, unfortunately, Tiran rolls a natural one and so completely fluffs it, and therefore the orc does get his uh, natural 20 for six damage on Tiran. Alright, so he takes some damage there. Like so. In fact, we can show the health bars if I... But let's do that. Bar 1. There we go. 19 out of 25. Like so. I'll get these health bars as we go here. Um, fantastic. So, um... Magic is so useless! <laughs> okay, so that is... His turn, deals 6 damage, it's the top of round 2, and Kelf, back here, it is Team Green's turn. So, you guys, what you up to? We used Reckless, so advantage on your... Uh, on our attack, you scallywag. <laughs> when did you use Reckless? I remember you raging, though, at the end of the last turn. You, ca you also can't, uh... I don't know if you can reckless attack on a hold action. I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, Kelf, let's move on. <laughs> magic rocks is your gravity that gives it power. Good old magic missile next time around. That can work. Alright, so Team Green, what are we doing? Sniping the marked one. Alright, so Hunter's Mark is on this guy here. So that would make sense to fire an arrow out. Um, on a 15, which is a hit. And let's roll that damage. So it's 1d8. So actually going to do quite a lot of damage here. Because we've got our Hunter's Mark on him as well. Plus 3. For 9 damage. And our Hunter's Mark is a 1d6. For an extra damage. And that is how the Orc dies. And uh, he is no more. As... Kelf just places a perfect arrow straight into the brain of the orc, and he falls down dead. So, orc red is now down. 
Alright, so we got Blue Orc. If we don't have a consensus, I will take the uh, uh, most voted upon uh, option for the spell. So that is Kelp's turn. Tyran, it is your turn. Uh, I can. Uh, I can move this marker here in a second. So, you guys, where do you want to be? Uh, we have our uh, fighter here. We've got one blue guy next to our friend uh, Wilbur here. A great kill, Kelf! Mm -mm. Uh, which primal path? Uh, yeah, we can vote. we'll go wolf. We'll go wolf. That can work. Burn it, bolt on the sea. All right then. So, do do do. Laughs wildly as he all falls. Ah, 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 ah. Fantastic. All right, so we'll move Tyrion in here so we can see easily. So Tyrion, you guys can make an attack now. Do you want this attack to be reckless at all, um, or are we just going for a straight up normal attack? We are raging, of course. So let's see what our rage does. Rage. Uh, you enter rage. You have advantage on strength checks and saving throws. You get a plus two damage to uh, the damage roll here, and you have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Nice. Move on top of the corpse. Regular attack or rage. Rage cage. All right. When a barbarian go big or go home. All right. Okay. So we'll have a raging attack. <laughs> Uh, this guy isn't marked. Uh, this uh, red was marked. Now the hunter's mark as a bonus action can shift to the blue guy, so we can say that he did that. But uh, Mark doesn't have a, a hunter's mark. Won't deal damage for the barbarian attacking. Only Kelf. Um, so we'll do a reckless attack. Let's remind ourselves what reckless does. I believe it gives us advantage. Yeah. Uh, so let's bring in a big cleave here. Let's hope that advantage comes in handy. It did a twenty-three. Uh, it is a hit, um, so, um, that is going to be some damage, and you have a great axe, which I believe is a d12, and we have plus two damage to this roll, because we have, um, we are raging, uh, tw that's a d20, not a d12, <laughs> a d12 is 11 damage though, I was like, 22 damage, how did he do that? Uh, so let me see what's going on in my token here. Give me back my orc, damn it. Okay, I'm gonna reload my roll twenty this one. Uh, he's not dead, but eleven damage is a mighty blow indeed to uh, to, to these guys. Uh, I just uh, rake him across the face with the axe, and he bellows out in anger, uh, cutting off many many pieces of this guy's flesh. Rage changes dice, is true. Uh, so that is Tyrion's turn. That takes it back to Wilbur's turn. Team Blue. Team Blue. What is our plan for today? We've got our longsword and shield that uh, Wilbur has. And let's see, after that, we have Lil Yen after Wilbur, so. Hi, right, Taku. Welcome back. Let's finish that bastard off, I see! I right, smack him on, shall we? Let's smack him on. Let's do it. Uh, so, nice, a 19 is a hit, a longsword, does a d8 of damage, plus our strength, which is free, for 6 damage. Alright, and actually, actually, it seems as though Tyrion and Wilbur have finished the crew off before, uh, Lillian actually gets to cast her, uh, magic missile off here. Um... We should chop off the heads of the combat just for good measure. That seems reasonable. Uh, so, let me go back to this one here. There we go. So, the sound of combat uh, fades away as uh, our combatants have slain our two orcish companions here. Chopping off their heads. Of course, Tanif. Hunter Conclave sounds reasonable, sure. Sounds reasonable. An honourable fight, my friends. An honourable fight, indeed. And, uh, yeah, Wilbur's like, I told you we could make it. I told you we could kill him. No need for stupid stealth elf. And, uh, and Gelf replies, Yes, it worked fine this time, but, uh, think how many others out there, they might have heard that sound of battle, dwarf. We should be more careful in the future. 
the only person who was injured in the fight was, in fact, Tyran. So Tyran uh, has taken... How much damage has he taken? Six damage uh, from the orc. So he's not particularly wounded. Uh, still within fighting shape. And there is this staircase leading down here. Uh, down to this entrance here. Uh, let's see. Keep walks over and rifles for the orc's crumpled bodies. Tapping out her cached pipe on one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, as you guys search the bodies, as I'm sure we are, uh, are bound to do, uh, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to, first of all, thank Zspikea, Zspikea, for subscribing. Let's raise some drinks and chat, everybody. Thank you so much. Hey, Click Monkey, how's it going, buddy? Welcome to the adventure. Welcome to the crew, my friend. Uh, you can take a short rest to expend a hit dice here. A Barbarian is a d12, a hit dice. So you can take a short rest if you guys want to at this point. Uh, but if there's a general consensus about not, then that is fine as well. Um, seven hours to go. Oh, damn. Yeah, 200 hours. Um, there we go. Um, so yeah, searching the orcs. Uh, you find uh, ten gold pieces between the two of them. Uh, they, uh, one of them was wielding a great axe, the other uh, was wielding a short sword. Uh, they have a dusty chainmail on as well, which isn't be better than any of the armor that you guys have on currently. So, um, so it doesn't seem particularly uh, useful. You did hear that Chieftain Ulf had put them on watch. Short rest for players. <laughs> What's up, Pika? If no one's hurt, let's keep going. Alright, cool. So, we'll go and hold guard on Avalon to rest. Okay, so, sounds like we need, um, uh, we don't need a, a rest as such. The group are going to press on. So, Tyrion and Wilbur, uh, maintaining the lead as, uh, <laughs> Lillian's like, I really hope we don't get into too many more fights. Huh. Um, and so the group, you can descend down here. Like so. Um, with Wilbur and Tyrion leading the way, unless, um, <laughs> let me just pick up that sword. Unless you guys want, uh, Kelf to go on another scouting mission, uh, as a team. So do we want to, uh, scout ahead again, or do we want to continue pressing forwards as a party? Um, nice. Fights make the life interesting, Lillian. <laughs> Yes, yes, that was very interesting. Killing two orcs, dwarf. <laughs> Did we not bring a cleric? Nah, he'd be fine. Send an elf down the stairs first. Alright, Lavender. Keep grabbing some oily cloth from the orcs and tucks it away. Scout ahead, alright. Now, uh, when I scout ahead this time, I'll try and, uh, I'll try and I can see, see if I can see some more. So Kelp's gonna uh, stop ahead of the party and see what she can find. She's at full health. And, um, uh, I'll let, uh, maybe some orcish sounds. You guys don't currently hear anything at the moment. I will roll a stealth check for, uh, Kelf. I think the charging tactic is good. Uh, so Kelf rolls a 15 on her stealth check. And I'm going to give her, uh, that 60 vision as well, seeing as she is an elf. To see what she can see down here. All oh, right, and I can read out a description for you guys as well as we enter this room here. Should be able to see all around you. So, it is one. Mm -hmm. Let me get down to my, my bit here. There we go, the mountain door. So, the path climbs up, uh, sorry, down one large steep switchback towards a bare shoulder of rock. The hillside rises steeply on your right and drops away precipitously on your left. Debris and rubbish lie scattered over a hundred yards or so. Discarded water skins, bits of charred bone, and splintered casks or kegs. Uh, as you head down into um, this area, let me just zoom out a little bit. You see uh, some kind of grand entrance. So these shallow steps that you guys have headed down here, they lead up to a steep fissure in this area uh, to the south and turn east into the mountainside. Here... A broad entranceway has been carved out of the stone. Marble steps, cracked with age and veined with green moss, lead to a strong double door of carved stone, eight feet wide and almost ten feet tall. Arrow slits high on the north and south wall command this area. So, 
you guys uh, can see that this area here is the door. So this bit here is where your door is, but you can't see it currently. Um, he's been an excellent due to her glaucoma medication. <laughs> nothing to see here. This is clearly nothing important. Let's go home and have a few drinks. You're whizzing the middle link. I don't know what you mean, man. Oh, okay. Starting a new campaign. Nice, dude. Nice. So you got a closed door here or so, hereabouts. Uh, <laughs> never split the party. Okay, you can see it a bit better. So you've kind of come up here, and you've got arrow slits on the north and south, and you've got uh, a closed double door here. No sounds of creatures emanate from beyond the door that you can currently tell, however. So, what is the plan for the Keith? For the kill. <laughs> Let's see. Do you see anything? Alright, so uh, so Tyrion and the others kind of call from the entrance. C can you see anything? Can you s Is there anything there? Uh, and Kalf replies, uh, There's... Uh, there's, a, there's a closed door. I, I can't see any other orcs. Uh, there are some arrow slits here. Uh, they, the arrows are uh, kind of in darkness, uh, but you sense that there may be rooms either side of them. If that makes sense. Um, so either side it looks like they are most likely uh, uh, rooms. Thanks Pokemon. Welcome to the adventure my friend. There we go. Uh, cool pipe forward, we'd like to kick the door. Should we smash it for you? Alright, okay, so you guys are going to pull up here. So we'll bring the party forward. So Wilbur and Tyrion and Lillian can also see what's going on here. Begins to slowly go down on set scale. Okay. Well, the group here. In this room, like so. Uh, so, it, she was right. Uh, I'm also going to need to roll Wilbur's Wild Magic Surge as I come down here. Uh, thanks to Dr. Narkovich. So, Wilbur, you guys are going to take a Wild Magic Surge. Try to shoot for the slits. Maybe you're gonna hit an orc of us. It's true. Indeed, kick the door. All right, the plan is to kick the door. Let me re read up this wild magic surge. First of all, what you guys are deciding? Three nine one nine for Wilbur. Three nine one nine. Oh no! When Caster's blood is next spilled, he can't speak for the next one d four turns. <laughs> no, he's okay. Not kick the spell is called knock. I mean, so, oh, okay. So you want to knock on the door? Okay. So so Lil Lil Yen can kind of uh, do a little knock 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 on the door. A little on the door. Uh, nobody answers you, however. Nobody is answering the door. Keep packs a fresh bowl and get a pipe. Says a party forge ahead. Huh? Maybe we should try to open the door first before we go full ham and kick it down. Good idea. All right, so um, so Tyrion can uh, can step forwards here along the rest of the party, uh, and you guys can see if this door even opens before you need to kick it down. I mean, it's closed, right? So let us see. Um, the door, uh, as Tyrion tries it, would appear to be unlocked. Uh, it doesn't seem to be locked anyway. Uh, oops. Okay, Nani. So, um, there we go. Let me get on my other map. There we go. So, this area opens up. The great hall, uh, sorry, the great door opens into a large hall. A narrow ledge overlooks a deep, dark crevasse that cuts the room in two. A dangerous looking rope bridge, frayed and thin, spans the gap. Water gurgles and rushes somewhere far below. Two copper braziers burn brightly on either side of the door, illuminating the western half of the room. Another ledge is barely visible on the other side of the chasm. So, doors are just practice smashing. Let me go to my GM layer here, on my dear dynamic lighting layer, so I can remove this barrier here for you guys, and open up the doors. Fantastic. So. Like so. So there's this rope bridge leading into a cavern from which there is falling water. 
and then there is uh, the braziers here and a passageway which leads either north or south. <laughs> it's all fish, only destroyed his wife room. So, uh, there we go. Let's bring you guys in here so you can step out and see this room a little bit better. Doors are the worst enemy. The enemy of all mankind. There we go. We'll put more by there and Keith. I keep calling it Keith now. Um, so, <laughs> seems sketchy. On the other side, as you step in here, two brutish humanoids stand watch on the other side of the crevasse. They snarl a challenge, revealing yellow tusks, and prepare to hurl javelins at you. So, you guys step in, and you see that there's two guys on the other side who begin to arg, arg, and are going to uh, attempt to lob a couple of javelins at the party. Let me get my right there. There we go. So, we're going to roll some initiative again. Oh yes, yes we are. The, the door seems to be very, uh, sorry, the door, the, uh, this thing, uh, it seems to be several hundred feet deep as you drop a rock, uh, drop a rock down onto it. So, uh, I'm gonna roll initiative here, so, uh, Kelf has a d20 plus 3 for initiative. Mm -hmm. She rolled a 4, oh no, Kelf, slow off the bat here. Not the javelins, I'm allergic to the javelins. I have an idea. Shall we charge the bridge? Yeah. Uh, at this point, start discussing your tactics for this combat. You've got a draw bridge, rope bridge here, which looks like it might be a little bit thin. Uh, and you got on the other side, you got these two orcs lobbing javelins. Uh, we're gonna roll for uh, Tyran on a free. My God. Uh, we're gonna roll for Lil Yen on a 19. Much more like it. Wizards going first. Looks like Kelf. Uh, sorry, roll for Kelf and Wilbur rolled a eight. Damn it, Wilbur. And the orcs are going to roll a plus one for a three. Holy crap. Uh, it's actually going last, so let me reorder this a little bit here. So we're going to have Lillian going first, followed by Wilbur, Kelf, Tyran, and then the orcs. So, I've got a turn order here for you guys. So, Team Green, sorry, Team Yellow, I always get this wrong between the two. You are Spellcaster, you're a wizard, you are currently... Kelv smokes on a dankist, giving me a razor-like focus, nat 20, there we go, Kelv's got a nat 20 coming up here. Uh, so currently, from your base, which I guess is here, you are 60 feet away from Orc, and we'll call this one Orc Red. And this guy can be Orc Blue again, like so. Should just be able to spot that. <laughs> you can mark another orc with a bonus action. You'd have to cast a spell again because you have the bonus action to, to switch it. I guess with concentrate, but it goes when it dies, so you have to switch it. So no, you'd have to cast it again as so a bonus action. Okay, so uh, we've got a spellcaster first of all, Witch Bolt. Okay, I see a Witch Bolt here in chat. So we can do a Witch Bolt. Puff, pass, pass. <laughs> Let's find Witch Bolt. Is actually Witch Bolt in the SRD? I feel like it might not be. Bollocks. Witch Bolt. Not Twitch Bolt. <laughs> it's Twitch Bolt 5e. Let's just read what this says. Alright. Its range is 30 feet on Witch Bolt. Uh, so you would have to move to be able to cast Witch Bolt. Uh, you'd have to be... Here, you'd have to get onto the rope bridge to cast Witch Bolt. Uh, you have a throwing hammer, yeah. So, if you want to cast Witch Bolt, you're going to have to move. Uh, see what the range is on Magic Missile that you guys had before. Acid, spl acid Splash was 60 feet. Uh, magic Missile. Do, 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 do. Uh, range is 120 feet on Magic Missile. Oh, you got Acid Splash, Magic Missile that you could cast here. So, uh, need the... <laughs> need the Team Yeller to make a call here. Let's try another Acid Splash. Okay. Alright, Acid Splash it is. So, Dex Saving throws from these two again. So, Orc Red. 
Rolled an 8 and he fails. Orc blue within 5 feet. Rolls a 13 and... Uh, what's the DC on that? Dex and Oh, it will be your spell save DC. Be level 3, it's higher than 13. So both of them fail and they take 1d6 acid damage. So red's going to take 6 and blue is going to take 2. Pretty good turn there, actually. From, uh, from Lillian. So, uh, a bubble of acid just kind of splurges out, uh, and, uh, and covers the two. Good job, guys. It'll work at some point. <laughs> the thing with magic missiles, it always works, right? Uh, so that's always an option. So that's the end of the end's turn. Stick in there, I'm guessing, unless you guys tell me you want to move. Wilbur. It is Wilbur's turn. Wilbur is currently... 50 feet away, and they have javelins, so you feel like they probably won't uh, rush in towards you. Um, you got 55, well, 50 feet away for that one, and 55 feet to blue. So you could double move, you could double time it to get there, and use your action to dash, and to get across the bridge. Tries to shield the party and give him cover so his friends can shoot him. Okay, well, being protected, that's a cool idea. That's a cool idea. Uh, you can't see further past the orcs uh, due to the darkness. Uh, the braziers are lighting up this area, so you don't see if they can they can run somewhere. Uh, you'd imagine that there probably is a chamber beyond there, but it's it's difficult to tell, right? Um, I'm sure they do. All right, so we'll, so what we can just shield the party if that's what blue team want to do. So we can step out. Oops, here. There we go. We can step out here and just try and like provide cover with his shield for the party. That's totally valid. I actually think they can dispatch them a few risks. Alright, so that is a uh, blue team decision. So Wilbur's gonna like hold up his shield um, and try and uh, and cover. So the distance from bridge to our door. Uh, from the door it is 15 feet. And from the door to the end of the bridge is 50 feet. The bridge itself is 30 feet long ish. About 35 feet long, right? Still on team double move and getting melee. Well, you're, so that's Tyran, so, uh, so Tyran can do that for sure. Uh, so it's Kelp's turn. Okay. So, I cover you! Kill him fast! Okay, so that is our friend Wilbur, who if he takes damage, he can't speak for the next one, two, four turns, by the way. Um, that is two turns. So many tabs up. Kelp! Team Green! Team Green! You have a natural 20 to use. So, what do you guys agree upon? The well, green team. I'm guessing there's going to be an arrow involved. A hunter's mark and a and an arrow, I'm guessing. Do, 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 do. Defer to your judgment, alright. Move action, take a partial cover, bonus action, hunter's mark, action, nat 21 ahead. Alright, cool. So, Lillian will step into the like light cover of Wilbur, we'll call it. So Wilbur's sort of like shielding up Lillian, uh, which gives her a plus two bonus to her AC um, while she's in cover. And uh, she, sorry, not Lillian, Kelf, my bad, Dorp. Uh, she's going to bonus action, Hunter's Mark, this guy, and we can take his token here to show that he is marked like so. Uh, he was already taken damage from Lillian. Um, and is going to nat 21 in the face. Uh, and that's double Hunter's Mark damage as well. So this guy most likely is going down here thanks to Judo Killer. That's 10 damage. And then the Hunter's Mark... Oh, actually the Hunter's Mark might not be double. Either way, either way that is actually enough to kill the guy. Uh, so an arrow just kind of whistles out into the night and the orc goes down and... And is immediately killed. Let me move that there. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Uh, as he's about to throw his javelin, he's like mid toss, and the arrow goes into his eye, and he falls backwards dead. There we go. Um, so, uh, yeah, Kelf took cover as part of her move action. Uh, so that is Kelf's turn, knocking out the first orc. Tiran, it's your turn. So, um,. So, Tiran, you are here. Uh, you are a dash away from the orc, basically. So you could dash, 
Or you could stay here in light cover behind Wilbur, who's currently using his action to shield you guys. So, uh, I think Keith has the most kills so far. Uh, so, um, it's impressive. It's impressive. To see, I don't even remember now. Um, so, that's racist. You are good for an elf. We, we can't let the elf show us up. Alright, so I think the, uh, are we going for a double action here? Dash in. Alright, we'll do a dash. We do have four javelins, you could lob a javelin. <laughs> Doesn't look like you have much say in the matter. Got him. Got him, jeez. Alright. Do, do, do. Okay, for a javelin. Alright, we'll go for a javelin toss. That's what we'll do. So, a javelin is going to lob itself into the night. Hope that bridge holds. Um, Jammer sounds good. Okay, uh, into the night at the orc back there, just within range. A 20! Ooh, 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 let's remind myself what the damage dice on a javelin is. A D6, right? Yeah, D6, nice. So, we've got Tyrion's got plus one bonus to uh, dex. So, max damage. Ooh, 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 very nice indeed, very nice indeed, my friends. So, this javelin just kind of embeds itself into the skull of the orc, uh, but just kind of dashes off the side of it. Uh, he's still standing, but he's been kind of scraped badly by the javelin. Uh, so, that is his turn. Alright then. So, let me find my orc again. And the orc is going to lob a javelin at Wilbur. Let's see, the javelin ranged is a 12 versus Wilbur's AC, but Wilbur has an AC of 16, motherfuckers. Uh, and so Wilbur just ah, holds up the shield as a javelin comes launching in and uh, and manages to distract the creature. So, <laughs> salami, god damn it. Protesting elves from what? Protecting elves from what? Your stench, obviously not. So, um, that is the Orc's turn. It's the top of round two. Lillian, I've got my spellcasting team back. All right, spellcasters. You are how far away from this guy? 70 feet away. So the only spell, unless you want to move, uh, the only spell currently is Magic Missile, but you could move to do an Acid Splash, or you could even move onto the bridge if you wanted to do a, um, uh, I forgot what the other spell is that you wanted to do, like a Witch Bolt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I think we ended up doing a second casting. I don't, I don't even remember. I, it doesn't matter too much for a second of this. We're all good. We're all good. Chill touch. Uh, chill touch. Let's see. Chill. Not chill. Not chill. Touch well. Chill touch is a 120 feet. That would work. Chill touch could work. Thank you to Hag and Grim for following. Welcome to the party, my friend. Uh, you are a gentleman and a scholar. Okay, let's see here. Too bad. No sorcerer can use magic missile again. Chill touch or magic missile? Magic missile. All right, we'll do a chill touch because I don't see a, a huge consensus. Uh, it's a ranged spell attack on a creature, on a hit, takes 1d8 necrotic damage. Grapple shot. Alright, so, we'll do that against the creature, which is a 22 versus arm class, which is a hit. It deals 1d8 necrotic, which is free damage. Chill touch. Can't regain hit points until the start of your next turn, the hand clings to the target. Okay, cool. So Lillian uh, creates a spectral hand which attacks the creature. See how much HP he's got left rocking on him. Does he survive? Yes, he does. Chill touch is not quite enough to kill this orc, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Who cares? It's just a game. Uh, so that's Lillian's turn. Wilbur, it's your turn. So Wilbur players, are we still staying in the fence? Or are we, uh, we rushing up to dash? Don't worry, Shalom. Enjoy. Enjoy, my friend. Mm -mm. Tie some rope to an arrow, shoot an orc, then pull a rope to basically pull the orc into the pit. That is a, a good plan for your turn. 
I have a powerful mage. I shall cast fist into the foul beast's mouth hole. Ha! Ah. <laughs> so, um, so, so blues. We got any, uh, we got any deal. Well, I congratulate for good shots. Still get taunted. No wonder why everyone thinks selves arrogant. Oh well, this is a bell and filthy old. <laughs> Defense, he doesn't need it. Warber charges. All right. Warber goes in for the mad dash. My kind of man. I like it. Okay, so... While you're under fire, he has to take a dexterity... A DC 10 acrobatics check. Because the rope bridge is actually difficult to, uh, to travel across. So... Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so... You have to roll an athletics check. Let me see what Wilbur rolls. He's not particularly acrobat. Sorry, acrobatics check. Uh, he's got his plus one to dex. DC 10, by the way. DC 10. He did roll a 10. Let me show you the guys that. There we go. DC 10 managed to roll a 10. And managed to just make it across the bridge. So you can move your 60 feet to be in contact with this orc here. Uh, as Wilbur enters this space... He can see that there is a closed door behind him, uh, behind the orc. Uh, the orc is, of course, pretty badly wounded. Um, and let me see here. There we go. Uh, there is a closed door behind him, which looks like it leads into a passageway back here. Now, what's up, Double D? How's it going, buddy? Yeah, I use incarnate, man. Uh, so that is Wilbur's turn. All right, Kelf. Kelf, Team Green. Team Green, it's your turn, my friends. What are we doing? We got Wilbur with the last orc here, by the looks of things. Let's tie rope to an arrow, shoot an orc, then give the rope to Wilbur and tear so I can pull the orc a little bit. I like it. I like it. Kill the orc. So are we going for a basic shot or are we doing something fancy here? He does look pretty uh, pretty injured already, so it might not require too much work. Pew pew. Pew pew, motherfuckers. <laughs> we just move up and try and get that last orc. Where it's at the rope trick probably just pulls him. It's possible. Okay. So I'll move you guys there, just so you can see the orc. I mean, you do have line of sight to the orc currently, so you can you can get a shot in. Um, you wanna, do you want to keep the, live, the orc alive for questioning? That's a good point. Do you want to kill the orc, or are you going to try and keep it alive and, like, pin it to the wall? Tyrion didn't charge, use a javelin. Yeah, yeah, he just he just loved a javelin, actually. <laughs> Banter. Doo, doo, doo. So we're on... Kelf's turn. Kill the orc. Let's see what it knows. Alright. Twelve is not a hit against the orc, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, a 12 is a miss. It just whistles out into the darkness and uh, does not connect. It is Tyrion's turn. Tyrion loved a javelin. He could continue to do that if he wanted to. Kelp is logical by description. Go question. Okay. <laughs> what would just cut off his head? He wouldn't hesitate. So you want to keep him alive. Stop him. Yeah. Will you not get out of my way? Throw jab? Throw jab team? Or are we going to be a... Uh, throw. Alright, we'll do a throw. Throw a Reno. Uh, so his javelin is dex, which is 2, plus prof. Alright. We'll give him a 11. Our javelin just whistles out. Uh, and uh, it doesn't quite connect. It clatters against the door here. Uh, Tyrion, uh, misses on his turn. It is the orc turn. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. Now, a couple of things happen at this point. First of which is this guy here steps out. Second of which is this guy here steps out. So. <laughs> oh, my God. Misty said, but is it worth a slot? That's true. So, so we've got two orcs, and these guys are armed with longbows. Here. And this guy is going to draw his uh, uh, 
Longsword to attack Wilbur, first of all. Let me see. Uh, is it a longsword? It's actually a great axe. Uh, he'll attack with his great axe on a 16 versus Wilbur's armor class, which is a hit. It's dead on. Wilbur takes 8 slashing damage as he all connects and lands a fine hit on Wilbur. So. <laughs> we have arrows! He's focusing the orc in front of him. Yeah, I imagine Wilbur is not noticing it. These guys here, Kelf is going to take a shot as uh, Kelf is going to attack the orc with a longbow. Uh, let me find this guy. Orc with a longbow. And he's going to shoot for a 15 versus Kelf's armor class, which is just a miss. <laughs> nice. And as a bonus action, the orc can move up to its speed towards a hostile creature it can see. And so it is going to move up towards Kelf, like so, using its bonus action. So, um, this orc up here is going to shoot at Tyran. And let me get my orc longbow back up. This attack is going to be a 20 versus Tyran's armor class, which is a hit. Tyran takes 7 damage as the orc manages to get a fine hit on him. Orcs aren't the most renowned marksmen, but they can definitely shoot a big target like Tyran. And he's going to use his bonus action also his, uh, to move towards Tyran, as he has that aggressive trait there. Let's be badasses of arrows, I agree. Okay, so that is the orc turn. It is the top of the turn order, and it is Lillian's turn. So Lillian, I've heard a little bit about some magic missile stuff going on here. Is that the plan? Equips melee arrows. Which bow only hits one target, that's true. Which bow does do a d12, that's true. I think there's a small tunnel before we went through the door. Uh, there were arrow slits. I uh, so, so if you guys remember, I mentioned that there were arrow slits to the north. Uh, let me just move Lillian back here for a second so you can see the room. To the north of this room in the south. And it would appear as though the orcs have heard the sound of battle from those rooms that I mentioned and have run around to attack you guys. So, uh, so that's what's going on there. Let's see. Should we go for it? Kill the weak one? Magic missile. Okay. Do damage to the other. Let Wilbur take care of the far one. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so we got Lillian. Uh, I will color these ones for more easy identification. We'll call this one green, and this one will be purple. So do we want a magic missile uh, purple or green? Okay. Hunter's Mark, first few turn. I like it, guys. I like the organization going on, the teamwork. That's what it's all about. Attack green. All right, I'll go with that one. That makes sense. Let's find our magic missile. Actually, I've got it up here already. Uh, so, you create three glowing darts. Each dart hits a creature of a choice you see in range. 1d4 plus 1 force damage to the target. So, we're going to do 3d4 plus 3. 3d4 plus 3 damage against this orc. 10 damage as these blasts go out from the... Uh, from Lillian and stagger the orc with damage. He's not dead, but he definitely looks like he's uh, he's wounded at this point. Um, okay, so um, so the orc just grunts out. Wilbur, it is your turn, my man. So Wilbur, you got an orc in your face. You got a long sword in your hand, and uh, you got the orc up here. Let's squish this little orc. So I want to see the same for any Team Blue. Unless you guys are doing anything different. Tries to taunt the Orc, realizes he can't taunt, just stab, slams him into the wall behind the Orc. Alright, no keeping this guy alive, it sounds like, from uh, from Wilbur. So he launches in with a 16, which is a hit. His longsword is a D8 plus 3 damage, which deals 8 damage to the Orc, and is enough to skewer him perfectly. And uh, as he comes in, just slices off the head of this orc here, and his javelins clatter to the floor beside him. Ah, take that, you bitch! Says Wilbur, as uh, he takes off the head of this orc. So, that is, um... So Wilbur calls back to Tyran. See, I got one! See if you can, see if you can follow that! Uh, and that is going to be Kelf's turn. So Kelf, 
You guys have got a orc up here in your face with a great axe. And, uh, I can't talk Wilbur. That's true, Wilbur can't talk. Wilbur can't talk. He's mu he's muted for the next, uh, Wild Magic Surge muted him for the next 1D, two turns. So two turns, uh, Wilbur can't speak. So he tries to do the That's so good. Okay, um, don't be worried, Lillian, I've got this. So, uh, Kelf, we, I saw some stuff. Clean kill the dwarf. We'll move Hunter's Mark to purple. Good stuff, bonus action. Then stab purple with an arrow because we're just that cool. Alright, so I won't give you a proficiency bonus with it because you're not proficient with stabbing people with arrows, but I will give you a dex bonus, which is a plus three uh, against the Orc of the Longbow in purple uh, for an eight versus arm class. So you, you grab like the arrow from your quiver and try and stab it in the face, but unfortunately for you guys, uh, the Orc manages to just dive out of the way. Arr! Uh, and that is unfortunately not a hit for you guys, but a solid effort and uh, better luck next turn. So that is Kelf's turn. Tyran, it is your turn, my friends. So, um, we could shove him as well as a good plan. That, that went better in my head, yes. That, that could have been better, I think. Um, so we've got our friend Tyran here with a green orc in his face. Uh, your strength is a plus three. Not legless enough. Yeah, not quite, my friends. Next time. Just a little push for a long fall. Okay, so if you guys want to push and throw him into the chasm, we could do a opposed athletics check. And so you guys would roll your strength, uh, plus your bonus in athletics, which is a plus two. So you'd roll a 1d20 plus five, and the orc would roll his athletics, which, of course, I won't reveal to you, but uh, he's pretty strong as well. So he's pretty strong. Let's see, there we go. Do, do, do. So what's the plan? A little push for a long fall. I need more keep And rage. Okay, cool. You're right. We're raging, so we have advantage with strength-based checks. So yeah, alright. I like it a lot. So this is Tyran's roll. Add advantage. Rolls a 13 to try and push the orc in. The orc retaliates with a 19. So unfortunately, uh, Tyrion kind of grabs the orc and tries to thrust him into the chasm, uh, but the orc actually rolls higher, uh, meaning he kind of keeps his balance uh, and and doesn't uh, jump into the chasm. Unfortunately, for you guys, so that is the orc's turn again. So unfortunate round for you guys. Not so uh, not so hot. We had. Uh, Kelf going in to try and stab with the arrow. We had Wilbur taking off the head of the javelin wielding blue orc over here. Uh, but we had uh, Kelf missing and uh, Tyran uh, failing as well. I did roll at advantage. I rolled twice. I rolled a 9 and a 13. The 13 was the highest roll. So that is uh, the orc's turn. This guy's dead <laughs> back here, blue. So purple is going to attack Kelf. And he's going to try his luck with his great axe again. See what he can do here on a 7 versus Kelf's armor class, which is definitely not a hit. So, um, yeah, no luck on that one. Uh, this orc down here fighting Green Orc uh, on Tyran is going to attack with his great axe. Rolls a 15 versus Tyran's armor class, which is a hit for 6 slashing damage. Now, you guys. Tyran is pretty wounded as things stand. He is on 6 health right now, out of his 25 uh, health total. So um, he's actually not looking super hot right now, uh, as your crashes in with the Great Axe. Arr! So, um, uh, the grapple check failed, so no, uh, the Orc is not grappled. Um, so that was all there. That is Lillian's turn. So Lillian, you got sight on the green orc who already looks quite damaged and the purple orc who hasn't taken damage yet. The orc should be able to be charmed as far as you're aware. Nothing has uh, sus uh, made you uh, suspect otherwise, I guess, as things stand. Tyrion, don't worry, I got your back. There we go. Da -da -da. We can do that. Charm green orc, make him walk over the edge. You can make him, uh, you can roll charm, or it's a choice between charm and magic missile, I guess. This is three. Charm person. 
Uh, if it feels saving throw, it regards you as a friendly acquaintance, yeah. So charm wouldn't actually make it walk off the edge. When it's charmed, uh, you wouldn't be able to actually command it as such. So, as that. Yeah. So, you're gonna have to... So, magic missile looks like. So, uh, this guy, you're gonna roll 3d4 plus 3 for the attack on this guy. For 9 damage. 9 damage from magic missile. Let me find my magic missile sound. Ha! And that is enough to kill Orc Green as Lillian gets her first kill of the day, my friends. First kill of the day. Oh, we should have like a we should have like a kill a kill tracker. You know, like how many um, kills each each uh, character has currently. <laughs> That'd be fun of fun. Um, you wanted to split? Okay, so actually the first, so we can do two damage to the purple orc. In that case, that will spill over from the third one because you needed the first two to kill him. So that is Wilbur's turn. Wilbur, what's the plan, my man? He can't speak right now. But he can move. Uh, Wilbur is currently... Uh, yeah, he could dash over. He could dash over to this guy. He couldn't... If you were standing here, you couldn't actually uh, attack from over the bridge. You would have to be in this space here. Or this space here. Any of these spaces will count. <laughs> if I found my deck over the bridge, do I die or get in a dangerous situation? I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> We'd have to find out. <laughs> well, maybe we're all tired. <laughs> I charge at the orc. Alright, let's roll an acrobatics check for Wilbur. Oh, Wilbur. Oh, Wilbur. No. Let's see. Okay, if it fails by five or more, which it did, the character must make a DC 10 strength saving throw. Alright, so Wilbur's currently here, so he failed his first check on a rope bridge, which means he has to roll DC 10 strength saving throw. His strength is plus 3. Oh no! It's a DC 10. It's a DC 10. Oh no! <laughs> so currently... Currently, we've got Wilbur, who, upon failing the check, is now clinging to the sides of this rope bridge. And if he fails one more check, he will plummet just 200 feet down to the bottom and, uh, and die, most likely. So, uh, he still can't speak, is the thing. So, like, <laughs> he still can't speak. Uh, so Wilbur just silently screams as he falls off the side and just grabs onto the rope bridge at the very end there. Alright then, so uh, that is the turn of Kelf. Uh, Kelf, it is possible to uh, move away to pick up Wilbur. Uh, it is a strength or dexterity check to pull Wilbur up from the bridge. Uh, however, you would take an attack of opportunity were you to move. I mean, it's entirely possible, like, you don't hear it as well. So, you know, it's, it's entirely possible you don't even know that that's happened. <laughs> so, uh, so, so up here, however you guys want. Do, 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 do. Dwarf, will you quit screwing around? Someone save him! <laughs> action plus bonus action to stab arrows again, two attacks, baby. Do we save the dwarf or cre keep fighting? Yeah, fight. Fight from judo. <laughs> Roll perception. <laughs> do do do. Let's, let's sit on our even more intense music. Wilbur's on the edge of the bridge, clinging on. It's a choice between staying and fighting. Uh, to act actively roll a perception check, you'd have to take an action to do it, so no. Vote fight. Vote fight it is. So, um... Two arrow stabs. We don't get proficiency of either of them. So a ten and a fourteen. I believe a fourteen might be a hit. Do my right action. Uh, fourteen is a hit. Uh, an arrow is an improvised weapon. Uh, so it's a we'll call it a D four plus your dex, which is free. So five damage to the orc. 
Uh, you kind of stab him in the face. Not enough to kill him, uh, but he does kind of argh, grunt out in pain as this happens. All right, so um, yeah, all right. So that is Kelf's turn. You guys can still move if you want to move, uh, or you can stay put and not take an attack of opportunity. Oh, Hunter's Mark, you're right. Thank you, thank you. For an extra six damage, uh, which is not enough to get him. Not quite. He looks very wounded though at this point, as your uh, your Hunter's Mark deals his damage as well. So, um, yeah, I rolled twice for your attacks, guys. So that is, you can still move if you want to, or uh, we'll move the turn over to Tiran. So Tiran, you're free. You're on six hit points. You can fight the orc, try and kill him, or try and save Wilbur. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I rolled two attacks, guys. <laughs> I rolled a 10 and a 14. One of them hit for five damage, and then Hunter's Mark damage. You guys got chill. <laughs> can the bridge hold the Barbarian and attack the Dwarf in the middle? Oh, can it hold the Dwarf? Sorry, the Barbarian and Dwarf in the middle? It's possible. You do have rope. Yeah, you got rope. I mean, you're, you're you know, adventurous. Pretty much all adventurers will have, you know, 60 feet of hemp and rope. So, so Team Red. This fur rope? Save the dwarf! We got the orc! Can we crawl to him? Sure, sure. I'm coming to save you, little boar. <laughs> if you want to go across a rope bridge, you also have to make a roll. It, it might be more difficult. We tie the rope off and rush to him. Okay. Okay. So you tie a rope off around yourselves and we'll say it's against like the, the door or the brazier or something. So throw, so you guys want to throw, okay, we'll throw a rope, okay, we'll throw a rope. Uh, so, we'll let this be a dexterity check from Tiran, his dex is a plus two. Ooh! That's not good, that's not good. So Tiran actually wastes his action, he tosses the rope, uh, and uh, I'm guessing he was like, don't want that natural or crossing the fucking bridge. Um, and, um... Yeah, there you go. Okay, so <laughs> the action has been made, gun, Dirt guys. That's that's what we're going with. So let's just move on from that. Uh, if I don't have if I don't have a consensus, I have to take the thing which I see first uh, and which you seem to agree upon at the time. So make sure that you have your turns ready when I come to them. So it's the orc's turn. The orc longbow is sorry. He's actually got a great axe now as well. Uh, is going to attack. Kelf, and let's see the Great Axe roll here. Previously hasn't had any luck. Come on. 20! That's more like it. Fuck yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's good that you throw the rope, because if you, if you roll a net one and fall on the bridge, you just die. <laughs> so, uh, 10 damage. Um, so, uh, against... Kelf! Oh, damn! So, 10 damage to Kelf as the Orc brings in the great axe against Kelf and just batters it against her. Nah! Uh, you guys would have a, you know, a dagger. Yeah, that would, that would work. Uh, that's the orc's turn. Lil Yen, Team Yeller, it's your turn. In fact, I could probably, uh, tie, dye these tokens a little bit so they can be tinted, right? Yeah, I can do that. Team Yellow, like so. Oh, this is beautiful. This tint, tear and red. So, uh, Team Yellow, let me know what you guys are doing. And uh, we'll do Kelf. Tint her green. And... Let's just move these t dead tokens away. And we'll tint blue to Mr. Wilbur. There we go. Nice and easy. Um, chill. Okay, hold on Wilbur if we can. Chill touch. Hold person to support Wilbur. No chill touch. <laughs> Run over and save Wilbur. You'll have to make a roll if he loses <laughs> love. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I need a consensus between the yellow team or I'll take one of the uh, the options. Are we trying to save Wilbur or are we attacking? Uh, what's the plan here? <laughs> that should be our turn. Uh, Scary, what's up, man? We've got uh, exclamation point chaplace. Find a rules there, my man. 
Give her up attack not to stumble again. It's... <laughs> hold person on Wilbur. Okay, hold person on Wilbur. Uh, and I believe that should is against a willing target. Target must succeed in the wisdom saving throw or be paralyzed. In of each... Okay, uh, so... <laughs> I was thinking of being really mean <laughs> and saying because he's paralyzed he can't move and so he just falls. Um, okay, so hold person, the creature automatically fails strength and dexterity saving throws because it's paralyzed, right? Uh, are we sure we want to do that? The target must succeed in the wisdom saving throw or be paralyzed for the duration. So in terms of the ways... In, a, in yeah, in terms of, you could like hold him exactly where he is, but then he's paralyzed, so he can't hold on. I guess, um, so he would just fall. So hold person isn't going to work on Wilbur, unfortunately. I think. I mean, it would work on him, but he might just die. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not gravity lock, unfortunately. Can Wilbur talk? Uh, he's still got a few turns until he can actually talk, unfortunately. So walk over. What's your touch? Okay, I, I'm hearing lots of walking over. We're gonna do a walk over. So we're gonna walk over and Lillian has to roll a dexterity check. DC 10, which she fails. Now we have to roll a strength or dexterity saving throw to not be on the edge, which is DC 10 as well. Which is a 20, so she stays on. She stumbles, but doesn't fall. She stumbles, but doesn't fall. Okay, and now she can use her strength or dexterity to pull Wilbur up. I said slowly, it doesn't matter. Whenever you cross the bridge, you have to roll a check. So, uh, you, uh, in fact as well, you would take an attack of opportunity. Ah, uh, no, you wouldn't. You can go from there to there, that'd work. Uh, so 20, so we're going to roll to save Wilbur. So a DC 10 dexterity check to pull Wilbur up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Wilbur is still clinging on to the edge there. <laughs> Kelf, it's your turn. Team Green. Team Green. We we were close. Close but no cigar. Dice are cruel gods. Yes, the die is not fun. <laughs> Get off my bridge. So that is uh, Team Green. We got you guys. What is the uh, what is the plan for Kelf here? <laughs> so funny. We draw our dagger and attack twice again. Okay, okay. All right. Dagger. We'll get proficiency in this one. Uh, Twenty-four is a hit. Second one should be a plus three. Sixteen, which is also a hit. Uh, I think this is gonna straight up kill him either way. Yep, uh, even I could roll the rest of the damage, but uh, the orc dies because he was on two hit points. So, he killed the orc. Uh, you run it through the eye uh, as Kelf takes another kill. Mike will give our actions. Okay, 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 sure. That seems good. Team Blue, we climb up and then charge the son of a orc. Everyone in favor? Well, the orc is actually dead, so. Um, so that, uh, Kelf, you can still move if you want to, but it looks like Lillian and Wilbur are on the bridge right now. It doesn't look like it can hold a lot of weight. Uh, so it could be risky, but you might want to try and just run over there. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Team Green. Triple kill. Fuck yeah. Alright, so. Go away, Twitter. There we go. We should likely do. We'll hold off until they clear. Okay, so that is Wilbur's turn. Uh, Wilbur still has uh, one turn until he can speak again. Actually, so Wilbur can't actually talk. But uh, Wilbur, it is your turn, my friends. So what are we? Uh, what are we going to do? He's clinging onto the edge here. Lillian's trying to help him up, but he's looking down at the chasm below. There's no way he can survive that fall. Don't go on a bridge without an anchor rope. One anchor rope, okay. Damn, Ed. 
Climbing up is a thing? Yeah, you'd roll a strength or dex check. So for Wilbur, it'd be strength. So it's a DC 10 to pull yourself back up from the side. He's got a plus three in it, so the odds are that Wilbur makes it. However, if Wilbur does not succeed in this roll, then he falls to his death. So it's 1d20 plus three, DC 10. I'm gonna roll it. He succeeds, he saves. Holy moly. So, Wilbur is up. And he can, that's, that uses half of his move action, so he can now move 30 feet. So Wilbur, do you want to be on this side here? Or this side here? <laughs> the odds of death are so high. <laughs> hey Naomi, welcome in. If you're uh, wondering what's going on, exclamation point chat plays. Ah. <sighs> Climb. Right, right hand side. Alright, we'll put Wilbur on the right hand side. So he rushes off, still unable to uh, to speak. So, that is our good man. That is... Wilbur's turn. Alright, so now we're actually out of combat. So, uh, you guys have succeeded in destroying the three orcs in this encounter, and which I think we can all agree was a pretty fun encounter, uh, with, uh, Wilbur on the bridge there. <laughs> the little trooper that he is. Uh, now, Lillian, you can safely reach it to the other side, if you so desire. Uh, those of you who don't tie a rope, uh, will obviously have to roll a dexterity check to get across, uh, an acrobatics check, but if you tie a rope, then you don't have to. Tyrion's holding a bridge to assist Lillian. Sure, okay, yeah, you can, like, hold it on to, uh, to help, to help Lillian get across. Absolutely. Free kills for Team Green, yeah. Perhaps you check the corridor to avoid ambushes. yeah. You know that the orcs came from the north and south, um, there. Uh, you find their great axes and their longbows, so you can replenish any, uh, uh ammunition that you spent. However, it's in terms of the state of the group as to where we are now, uh, and we have Tyrion, uh, who is on 6 hit points currently. We have Kelf, who's on 14 hit points, just over half health, about 60%. We've got Wilbur, who's about 75% of his health still going up on 22, and Lillian hasn't yet taken a hit. Um, so if you guys want to take a rest... You would need to find what you would consider to be a safe area. Uh, Wilbur can now speak out of this combat. Uh, so yeah. Well, thank you for assistance, Lillian, and good fighting. Um, so you'd need to find a, a, a patch where you can, you know, resting on this bridge area isn't going to be safe. Uh, you also know that there are, is the door here, which leads into further. And you've got the rooms to the south uh, and to the north to explore as well. Uh, from now on, I'll assume that you guys... I'm leaving it for Lillian. Okay, cool, cool. Team leader, gotcha. Um, the room's north and south, outside. Okay. So from now on, I'll assume that the ropes are tied to you when you're crossing, which means that you won't need to roll checks to get across. Uh, so um, you can still... You can still get over like that. So um, let me... I'll get rid of these tokens just to clean up the map a little bit. There we go. So we can have you guys over on the other side here. Now, uh, do you guys want to explore the room to the north or to the south? Cross the bridge and then cut it down. That's, that's interesting. Yeah, you can still vote and stuff. This is, it is useful to have a spokesperson for the group often. Uh, let me see here. Hmm. So, um, spawn north. All right, let's just split up. We'll go north first of all. All right, so we'll have Wilbur. Maybe Tyrion doesn't go so f far ahead, seeing as he's quite wounded right now. But hey, uh, you turn a corner, uh, and uh, as a group of you approach, uh, you see that there aren't any orcs in this room. Aren't any orcs in this chamber here? I'll put you in so you can. See. It's, oh, I was meant to move these guys. There we go. Yeah, I was going to say there are only orcs in this room, and then I realized that there actually are orcs in this room. Okay, my bad. 
<laughs> okay. I see where my mistake was made here. I'm on two different maps currently. And so down to the south, there aren't any. There's nothing in there. But this room to the north. So, uh, Wilbur, roll me a quick stealth check. <laughs> As you head into this room. Uh, and when I say Wilbur, roll me a stealth check, I guess I'll roll Wilbur a stealth check. You rolled a 16. Okay, so here's what happens. You step in, about here, and you spot that there's an orc in the chamber here. Uh, in fact, we'll see if we can get you there. You can spot that there's a second orc jump up here as well. So, they haven't spotted you yet, so you might be able to get the jump on them. But you know there are orcs there. Um, we'll quickly say that you've explored the area to the south, uh, and there's basically nothing in this area here. Uh, it's just an arrow slit here, so just a guard station basically. So, uh, this is where you find yourselves now. Do you guys want to charge, or are we going to stealth? Uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's do our, let's do another poll. Alright, so sneak and attack is vote one or vote two. Let me see if I can save this preset. I can do that in a minute, yeah. So we've got, um, one or two for vote, and it's going to exclamation point vote, and I'll vote for... Oh, I'll vote for sneak. Tyr is kind of been injured. There we go. So, crunch time, my friends. Get voting. Uh, also, remind you guys, in this uh, point here, if you haven't followed and you're enjoying the adventure, hit that follow button and join us. We will get viewer decisions going in this game if we hit enough followers, so uh, keep that in mind. You guys will get to decide an element of the story, which should be a lot of fun. Alright then. Looks like we've got a lot of votes in for... Yeah, it's 9 to 1 for sneak, so I'm going to close the poll there. Seems like a pretty clear one. So... Um, sneak one with nine votes to one attack. So, uh, we got a group of you here. You now have the option. Who is going to sneak in first? Is Wilbur, uh, so I'll tell you this much in terms of, put Wilbur there. In terms of the mechanics of this combat, you guys will have a surprise round here. Uh, but you can decide in, on your, uh, marching order. So, if you want Kelf to be first, or Lillian to be first, or Wilbur or Tyran, then you can uh, decide on that. Wilbur grinds his teeth and says to himself, I can't risk my friends for a charge, even I miss some glory by a more tactical approach. Um, so, so when you stealth in, you'll be able to do that. Or if you want to just kind of try and move past them, uh, that's an option as well. But either way, it looks like you guys are going to be uh, sneaking in and, and slitting some throats. Lillian in the back, okay. So we'll put her back there. Um... Let's see. Sneaky's more your thing. Alright, Kelf's the sneak of the group, I guess. So I'll put Kelf here while we're behind, like so. Kelf will go second. Tyrion's rig put him in third. Oh, so we want Kelf in second? Okay, we'll do that. Like so. So we've got Wilbur up front, then Kelf, then Tyrion, then Lil Yen. That looks like our marching order currently. Uh, yeah, Tyrion is pretty wounded right now. Okay, so, um, you hear the uh, guttural sounds of the two orcs, and um, we'll use this order for initiative, actually. That'll probably be the easiest way to do this, instead of rolling every time for that. Uh, so, our surprise round will we can go like that. Um, Fader Tanith and N.A. Kraken for following. Welcome to the adventure, my friends. Alright, fantastic. So, we'll put our little turn order up here, just for the sake of argument. We'll have Wilbur going first. In fact, we'll just put him like this. Wilbur. And then Kelf. And then Tyrion. And then Lillian. Alright. In fact, I will roll uh, for the group. So an 18. And these guys will roll a 14. Alright, cool. So, not only are you guys going to get a surprise round on them, but you are also uh, going to be going first. Uh, on the initiative track, we come into a normal turn order. So, um, we have Wilbur, who uh, can take the first action here, as he is up front. You've got this surprise round. Surprise round means that you each take a turn first. Uh, basically, you get two rounds before these guys are going to act. Um, just kill them quietly. Okay, so we want to go for a stealth option, so we, so we did mention going for a kind of quiet option. So, Wilbur, how are you going to try and kill these guys? Quietly, Babs. 
Okay, so ready action. Okay, so Wilbur makes keep some space and readies his action when he orcs notice him. Okay, cool. Okay, we'll wait until notice. So we'll put Wilbur like here, and you can see the two orcs that are there. Uh, Ivalon, yeah, you can check out our chat plays. There you go, buddy. Um, like so. Ooh, just found a new thing on my map. What is this? Yeah. Okay. Don't don't worry about my excitement. It's nothing. Uh, so um, <laughs> it's nothing. I promise. So uh, we'll be ready this action. Kelf, we're gonna take your turn. Thank you to Dalit for following. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fire an arrow. Anything else, Team Green, want to do? And make sure, guys, think about it as we're in combat here. What is your turn going to be when it comes up? So be thinking ahead. So we've got Tyran going next. So what, start asking yourselves what we're going to be doing in our turn. We've got Lillian after that. Start thinking about that. Uh, so, DM smiles, we're dead. <laughs> Halfway to review decision already, my friends. If we can bonus Hunter's Mark, then shoot. Uh, I think the person with the least team members is probably Wilbur currently. Pretty Wilbur. Um, okay, Hunter's Mark, then shoot. Alright, so this guy, Hunter's Mark. Hunter's Mark, this guy here. You can see that he's wielding a longbow and he also has a great axe. Uh, similar to the ones you fought before. So, Hunter's Mark and bonus, uh, sorry, an action attack of the arrow. Arrow is a 13. Let me check his AC. A 13 is dead on. That's the perfect number that you want to hit. Uh, Kalf deal 6 plus 1d6 Hunter's Mark damage. 9 damage to the first orc who squeals out in pain as he's shot in the butt by Kelf. Good job, guys. So, um, that is Kelf's turn for now. Tiran. It is Tiran's turn. So, Tiran's still on 6 HP here, buddy. Not, um,. Not feeling so hot, but uh, you got one orc who's been shot here, and you got another one here. You guys are currently, yeah, you're within range of the first one and within range of the second one as well. In case you wanted to get toe to toe, or you could lob a javelin. You could throw a javelin from here. You'd, uh, you'd probably need to move to about this space here to have line of sight, like so. You can't stand where Kelvin's standing. In large Wilbur, we're <laughs> one mean bitch. Oh yeah. Nine damage total is what you guys did, yeah, with uh, Kelf. It's pretty damn good. Uh, enlarge, reduce. We could totally do fire breath. <laughs> Javelin's a good call. Okay. <laughs> what colors control go for? <laughs> oh man, we got a tricks of the trade game coming up in a little bit. I, I'm really, I honestly am really enjoying this. Like, uh, if I didn't have a. Uh, Commitment to play the video games. I'd, I'd happily play six hours of this game, to be honest, I think. Um, I don't know about you guys, but... Uh, we'll move towards Wilbur and throw a javelin. Okay, cool. Alright, let's move towards Wilbur. Let's lob a javelin. It's a plus four for Kieran on his javelin. Um, it will say he kind of refueled his javelins, uh, restocked it from the orcs before. Oh, a six is not a hit, unfortunately. So he launches a javelin. Uh, but doesn't manage to connect a hit uh, on the orc, unfortunately. Okay, so that's Tiran's surprise round. Lillian, uh, Team Yella, it is a, um, a turn for you guys. Uh, now, yeah, okay, so so Lillian, what you guys want to do? Witch Bolt, Witch Bolt is good. We can disguise ourselves to look like an orc from Tender Pie. Is that prison? I like it. Okay. <laughs> Nine rectal trauma. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna say you guys are running low on spell slots, so we'll say that you've got, uh, I don't know, two level one spell slots left. You've got cantrips up the wazoo, of course. Disguise self into an orc. <laughs> okay, witch bolt. Gotta have a consensus here. I don't, I don't think that disguise self is probably a bit too late, yeah. Um, so we go for a witch bolt. We'll go for a witch bolt. Um, sorry guys, that pain is too huge to throw accurately, yeah. I imagine so. Do not want that. I want my witch bolt. I want my witch bolt. Hey. All right. So throwing the witch bolt is a thirty feet the beam of crackling blue energy lances towards the creature. On a hit, it's a d12 lightning damage. On the end of each of your turns, you can use your action to deal one d12 lightning damage to the target automatically. All right. So this is the last spell slot being used. 
Alright, I've seen plenty of pro Witch Bolt. We'll do that. Uh, we'll have to move, of course. So I have to move Lillian here-ish. To be in range. A 21's a hit against this orc for a d12 of lightning damage. Which deals 12 lightning damage! Holy mackerel. Holy mackerel. 12 damage is enough to kill this orc. As Lillian gets her, uh, her next kill. This crackling beam just fires towards and destroys this orc here. Alright, cool. So, that is Shazam. That's right, what's up, Catalyst? So that is Lillian's turn. She moves and attacks. The orc takes his turn. Now, you see this orc bellow out in anger. And he grabs a, uh, a horn from his belt. And he screams into it and you hear a second horn yell out in the distance from the north somewhere up north a second horn bellows out in answer so uh there we go uh surprise that's all he gets to do wilbur back into normal turn order uh so wilbur you get the jump on this guy so, Wobber, my man. The man of a plan. He's ready to an action. Um, I don't know what a ready to action was for. He charges a second orc. Okay. Do, do, do. Let's see. The time of excellent orc cleansing is upon you, scum. Charge second orc. Alright, okay. Let's do it. We charge second orc. Okay. There we go. Animate dead, you can get a sixth level, I believe, right? Um. So, Wilbur is going to attack with his sword. For a 23, which is a hit, which deals 1d8 plus 3 damage. 4 damage against this orc. Slashes against it. So he didn't get to take an action, but he did get to blow his horn in turn, even though he's surprised. So, uh, we need a better backup narrow daggers. You do have uh, actual, uh, an actual dagger. Um, you've got one spell slot left to use. So, that is Wilbur's turn. <sighs> okay, Wilbur's turn. Kelf. Kelf, 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 Kelf. Kelf uh, isn't in line of sight of this guy, because Wilbur's in a way. Um, but you could move here and, and shoot past Wilbur to attack the orc. Wilbur is short, after all. You have one dagger, you don't have double daggers. So, you've got double arrows, so you can do offhand attacks, right? Uh, so, Kelf. Um, with salami, terrible but still cool. Okay, okay. Adjust Hunter's Mark and Fire. Move into the room, adjust Hunter's Mark and Fire. Okay, sounds perfect. Hunter's Mark is now on this guy. I'll mark it there. Doing work. Move in and fire. Fire! Barricade the door and hope we get Fabian's arrest. <laughs> it's the plan. It's, uh,. Let's see, so we move Kelf here, fire, four, plus five against this orc on a 22, which is a hit, deals 10 damage, plus six, 26, plus 15 damage, damn, total of 15 damage, rather, which is enough to slay this orc. Um, so the orc just goes down as you very swiftly move in and uh, destroy the... Destroy the orc. Um, Wilbur can see down this corridor some way, uh, and he can tell that it turns uh, both to the left, to so some area here, and also looks like it turns down to the right as well. Uh, we're still in turn order because of that horn, so we're actually not out of turn order currently. We're still considered to be in combat. That is Kelp's turn. It is Tiran's turn. Tiran, uh, you can hear the babble of um, the babble of angry orcs coming from the north, and you know that where that horn went off, more are soon to come. So you have a turn here, looks like, to um, uh, to prepare for the worst, to do a Boromir. They have a cave troll. Is uh, the mo the moment that we're uh, we're looking at here, I think. So. Oh, I can show that. Yeah, cool. I like it. 
All right, so um, what's the plan for Turan? Orcs are dead. So I'm guessing Tiran's going to move up somewhere. You've got this narrow corridor here. So this corridor does look defensible. Um, there's only... Uh, there's 10 feet of it, so there are squares in between. So you could form like a shield wall with Wilbur if uh, you guys wanted to. Um, need to hear something from Tiran. We can move up to the corner and prepare to attack when they come funneling it. I like that idea, Crossfire. I like that idea. Let me clean up some of these tokens. Move them out there, there we go. Rare Frost Boots, sounds good. Okay, okay. Let's ready besides that uh, half hallway to say the first Ogre Wanderer. Okay, so we'll move you up here with Wilbur, and you can ready an action to um, move halfway down this hallway here, and ready an action for when they come around and attack you guys, uh, you can uh, attack. And if you want to move up further, you can move up further. Uh, let's see, you were, what, here? You can move up to uh, here if you wanted to, so furthest you can move is here, or you can move next to Wilbur if you want. Um, I'll keep you there for now and then, I'll let, you, then let me know. Uh, so, Lillian. Lillian, mon frere. It is... Move around a corner and prepare to go in. Okay, so just this corner here. Alright, moving there, moving there. Uh, so, Lillian. My magic, my magic man. It is, uh, it's Lillian's turn. The corner of the large room. Okay, this corner here. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, uh, we say we've got Ray of Frost. we got, uh, Ray of Frost is a cantrip, I believe, right? So you've got one spell slot still left to spend. You don't have anything to currently uh, attack, so it might be another uh, case of move up and ready action. Alright, Ray of Frost is a cantrip, right? Ooh, Ray of Frost. That cantrip, yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, you don't have any enemies to attack right now, so I'm gonna put you here until here, boys. Just move up and ready action. Okay, move up and ready action. Good, -o. I'll keep you behind the spellcasters for now. Uh, okay, we have our baddies turn. Fantastic. So, you guys spot uh, a couple of things coming from the north with bellowing shouts. You see one orc cross here and he's going to rush down, followed by a second orc. He's going to move to here. Uh, I'll move him slightly in so you can see him a bit better. Like so. And then you see a character coming behind him. Now this is something I should be able to show to my players and bring up in roll 20. There you go. You see this guy coming out from the darkness and uh, he's wearing this full kind of plate mail double handed uh, great axe in his meaty fists and he's stumbling towards you. You can see that he's the guy that called back on the horn and uh, is coming towards you. Um, so, that is their chance to move. They actually had to dash to get here. You hear the sounds of others coming down there as well. You sense that you might have alerted uh, more than just the three of them. So, you got... Uh, everyone's got a readied action. Um, currently, uh, but they, does everyone have a ready action? Don't think Kelp has a ready action, right? Um, so Lillian's got a ready action, so, um, so Lillian can Ray of Frost, right, as her, let's see, readied an action for when someone came down to cast a cantrip. So yeah, we'll say, um, well, I'll, I'll roll a quick Ray of Frost as your ready to action here, unless you want anything else you want to do. Frost, there we go. So I don't believe Kelp is a ready action, but remind me if I'm wrong. Uh, range spell attack 1d8, and this can be against Orog. Who's this bad guy here? Ray of Frost, Ray O Frosty. 
It's a 24, which let me check his AC, because we've got a new stat block. Uh, is a hit, yes. 24 is a hit, which does 1d8 cold damage and makes him move 10 squares less. So Orog takes 4. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> What's up, Danilo? Okay, so that is your ready to action. So, let's go back to the regular turn order. So, Wilbur, uh, you got your ready to action, but it hasn't triggered. Um, so, uh, you can now just use your turn as you would normally do. And you've got these two orcs here coming towards you, charging at you your great axes. Or, I mean, you could move back and ready to action. I'm going to hold this wall here with Tiran if you wanted. Or kill every orc that comes close to him. So, do you want to charge in, or do you want to wait for them to come to you? And do another ready action. Do do. There we go. Uh, we could retreat and cut the bridge when they get there. It's possible. It is possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, holding the walls plan. Hold the door. Okay, there isn't, there isn't actually a door, but you can hold this kind of wall area here. So, this sort of passageway is being held. So, Wilbur's got a ready action. Now he's letting them come towards him. Um, boom, 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 boom. Uh, yeah, you guys don't have Tola dead. That's not enough Takana, right? So, uh, Kelf, it is your turn. You got Orc One. Uh, I'll cut these guys. Uh, you got Orc Red. We got Orc Blue. And we got uh, Orog. So, what you guys doing? What you guys doing? We'll use bonus action to hunt his mark, the Orog, then move to Tiernan and cast Cure Wounds with our action. Use any remaining movement to move back. Agreed, agreed. Move up, cast Cure Wounds on Tiernan and move Hunter's mark to Orog. Okay, okay. Cure Wounds, uh, D8, right? Let's check. Could be less. Could be more. D8 plus spellcasting modifier, we'll call that free. Uh, it's a touch. Okay, Hunter's Mark is now on Orog. You have no way of knowing his name, but we'll call him that, you know. It's better to know boss names. Uh, and it's a D8 plus spellcasting mod. Three. Four. Okay, minimum, but it's still it's still good. It's still good. So, um, didn't want me to do that. He had six, he now has ten. Um, so, with a uh, array of healing magic... Tianan is uh, healed somewhat by Kelf. Here, take this, Tianan. Thank you. So, that is Kelf's turn. That is a move. That is a action. And that is a bonus action. So, Tianan, it's your turn. You got 10 HP, my man. We still ready? We still holding? Ready a swing after raging? Uh, yeah, your rage uh, would have dropped, so you can re-rage. <laughs> re-rage! Rage again. Huzzah. <laughs> we shall witch. Okay. So, uh, yeah, what's the plan for Tiernan? Continue to ready action and then rage. Let me let me hear from you guys and I'll and then I'll know. There we go. Okay, back up a bit with remaining movement. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, you move up there. Like so. Or here. So we've got Kelf, we'll call it there, so she can have a good line of sight on all of these guys coming down the corridor towards him. Hey, you've a Molotov for following. Rage again and ready for our first open space. Alright, fantastic. There we go. Da -da -da -da. So that takes it to Lillian's turn. So, Team Yellow. Yellow team, what is the plan here, my friends? Don't use slot, just spam the second in line. Okay. Use Witch Bowl, uh See us Lamy, see you in a bit. Uh this show goes for about another ten minutes. Yeah. One to twelve sustain, so you could witch bolt this last guy here. Would expend your last spell slot. Or you could magic missile, ray of frost, or whatever else it is you guys might want to do. Okay, okay, use bolt, use bolt. Alright, I got I got two saying bolt, so I'll go with that for now to keep things running a little bit quicker. So this is against the Orog. That's a hit on a 21. Using the last spell slot, does 1d12 10 damage against this guy. Very nice indeed. With a zzzz, uh, he is uh, 
hit with that bolt. So, um... Alright, so that is Lillian's turn. You will have a d12 each round to get to do it. So it's these guys' turn. Huzzah, the orcs, get their go. And they are going to do their thing. So this guy's going to charge in, of course. Wilbur's going to get his readied action on this one. And this blue guy, uh, Tiran, is going to get his readied action on this guy as well. So. Alright, so this guy, blue, is going to fight Wilbur. Uh, I can just roll it here, actually. It'll be easier. My orc. My orc. Yeah. Uh, deals a... 17 versus Wilbur for 7 slashing damage. Wilbur's on 15 hit points as the orc just... Choom, smacks him. And uh, that really hurts. This orc here is going to attack Tianan. With a 23 for 12 damage. And my friends, unfortunately, Tianan is down. We have our first downed character... As, uh, Tianan is... In fact, no, before they get to attack, you get to do your readied actions. My mistake. So, I'll... Why would I even do that? I, I didn't know I did that. Either way, you get to do your readied actions first. Let's do those first. Let's reverse. Back in time. Blue, 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 Oh, wow, back in time. Wilbur attacks the orc for a 10, which is a miss. Tianan attacks the orc with rage. Uh, for a 20, so his rage is going to do an extra, uh, he's got 5 on that, uh, so 8 damage to the orc, which isn't enough to kill him, then the orc attacks Wilbur and hits, then the other orc attacks Tiernan and downs him, there we go, 8 damage wasn't quite enough to kill the orc, so there you go, um, Mm -mm. That's true. Rage reduces damage against... Uh, you've got resistance to that, so you took how much damage? 12 slashing damage, so you take 6. So you're actually still on 4 hit points. Ooh. Oh, you had me worried there, guys. You had me worried for Tiernan there. Well remembered. Alright, so that is... Orky, Orky, Orog's gonna do his thing. Let's see what his fun list of abilities that he gets to do. Yeah. Oh, goody. Oh, goody. Um, so, Orog is going to do his thing. He's going to launch a javelin. Uh, he will launch that at Wilbur. In fact, how was his range on this guy? Let's see how much he can shoot a range. 30, okay, let's see. 30 to 120. So he's just out of range of... He'll attack Lillian. He'll attack Lillian with his javelin. Uh, that was actually the wrong roll. That was a melee attack, not the ranged attack. This is a ranged attack. It's an 8 versus Lillian, which dives wide. So, Lillian still doing just fine. Alright, that is their turn. And Wilbur, it is your turn. Should we disengage directly? <laughs> Oof. Yeah, Hunter's Mark is on Orog right now. So I need, uh, I need to hear from Team Blue. Do we attack? Do we disengage? Seems like the, the party want to stay and fight currently by the sounds of things. <laughs> Get ricked. There we go. We have two sl shots, right? Uh, you don't have extra attack, no. Attack. Can Wilbur hit the orc that attacked here? Sure. Alright. He'll attack that orc there, the blue orc, I believe it is. For a 20, which is a hit, which deals 1d8, plus 3, 7 damage against this orc, which is just enough to kill it. Dead on the number needed as Wilbur slays this orc and Tyran. Here, let me give you a hand! There we go. Alright, that is Wilbur's turn. Lillian should back up. Do, 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 do. That's Wilbur Kelf. You got this, this big meanie here. Who you've hunted marked. Uh, you got one dead one there, and you got the orc on Wilbur who's still fighting away. Let's focus down Oric. Go on Oric. Alright, Wilbur will be fine. We'll be fine. Uh, Tyrion shouts, guys, we need to back off, let's disengage! 
The barricade at last door. Okay. Fire on Orog. Roger that. Orog takes a 11 versus his armor class, which unfortunately is not a hit. Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, so the arrow just kind of whistles past and doesn't quite find its mark in the narrow tunnel here. That is... And do you want to back up any? Uh, there was, there's talks of retreating from the battlefield here. There is talks of cowardice. <laughs> I don't know whether to believe them or not, but uh, this is what I've heard. Retreat, I will cover you! <laughs> do, 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 do. Don't need to retreat? Alright, alright. We're staying where we are, we're staying put. Roger that. Tiran. Tiran, it's your turn. You're still engaged in combat with this orc here. Um, so you could take a disengage action if you wanted to. Push yourselves against the door. Still in line, so I'll move you guys like here ish. So you can still see him. Square to the right. Alright, put you about there. Got stain witch bolt. Mm hmm. <laughs> Retreat is just advancing backwards. That's a good point, Senrif. That is a good point. Kill that orc, then back up. Ah, uh, he is engaged in combat. He is within five feet of a combatant, which means that you're engaged, yeah. Uh, back up as much as we can. Just Tanif. Uh, okay. Disengage to be smart, move back ten feet. Okay. So you guys want to disengage, that's fine. Towards the stairs. Alright, so I'll move you guys back here-ish or so. So you take disengage actually, you don't provoke an attack of opportunity from this guy who's standing next to you. Uh, and you back up on your action. Okay. Uh, if there's anything else I've missed for tier round, I can go back to it. But uh, Lillian, your turn. What's the plan? Don't need line of sight to sustain. That's true, yeah. I don't believe you do need line of sight to sustain the uh, uh, witch bolt. Do, do, do. So bonus action is sustain, right? So an extra d12. So I know you guys wanted to do that. So an extra 11 damage against a guy. Fuck yeah. Very nice. Extra 11 damage against Orog. Cool. Back up and sustain. Alright, I'll move you guys back here-ish. That's fine if you guys still got line of sight on this guy pretty easily. Um, hey, it was a frog. Half a year. Half a year, my friend. A gentleman and a scholar. Let's raise some drinks in chat for Mr. Frog. There we go, buddy. Holy shit. Getting close to our baby. It's like nine months. So. Okay, so we're kiting them as a plan. It's the orc's turn. This guy. I'm going to move his token off there. This guy's going to move in to attack Wilbur. Is Orog. And so we'll move him here. So Orog is going to uh, attack. I'll do the Orc attack first. The Orc attack against Wilbur is a 8, which is a miss. Uh, Orog is a boss guy, so of course he has that sweet, sweet multi-attack on him. And so he's going to attack twice. The first one is a hit on a 21. The second one is a miss on a 12. He deals 14 slashing damage to Wilbur, who is now on one hit point, as Orog just smashes in and attacks Wilbur. Oh man. Oh man, oh man. It's not looking, not looking so hot for Wilbur right now. Okay, that's the Orc's turn. That takes it to Wilbur's turn. Wilbur, my man. This guy's looking, he's looking weak, I'll give you that. This guy's looking weak, uh... This guy up here to your north has not taken any damage yet, though. We've got to, we've got to make a decision here. Time is, is not the essence. 